Sometimes you stare into the deer and the deer <laughs> stares back. Oh man, I didn't have recording on. That would have been no. Something's wrong with that deer face. That's not a normal yeah, deer it, face. It's it look angry. Like. It what angry. I'm hearing here is that you've got like leftover neuroses related to deers. <laughs> Oh, right. Not a normal dear face. It's absolutely <laughs> normal. Stop staring at it, young Nicholas. You're going to make yourself go weird. You, you get hair and. Oh, no weird! I remember when you were already there. Boy. Um, cool. Let's have some reminders from last session. And it was two weeks ago, and I have, for various reasons, not had time to edit yet. So I remember some of it, but honestly, I'm a bit blurry. So please do correct me if I get positionings wrong or anything. Um, potentially hollow underneath the boxy structure atop White Mountain. A low howl was heard in the distance. Potential activity has been seen over at Catclop Point. The werewolves, alleged, may be aware of a magnetic influence slash trying to keep people away from the village, question mark. Everyone is currently down to their last bullet. Oh, well, they're down to their last current bullet, so all of your weapons are loaded, but you've got your last shot in at each. 75 plus villagers are currently dead. There are <laughs> lots <laughs> of... You actually killed them quite solemnly, I think. I... <laughs> you did. Um, <laughs> they weren't really combat ready, were they? No. There are Turns out when your targets are walking towards you and don't really make much chance of like you know dodging, real easy to kill them. It was the equivalent of stopping, st- standing at the bottom of a cliff, and just with a like a baseball bat and just waiting for lemmings and just whack, whack. Or like, or like standing at the top of a mountain and waiting for people to walk into your guns. There are lots of corpses at the base of White Mountain. And apparently someone wanted to determine where corpses at the top of the mountain go. And that's it. I think it was either, cl- was it close to midnight or the early hours of the morning? It was one of the two, right? I think it was early. Mm. Okay, okay, so early hours of the morning. Uh, and I believe you just heard a howl in the middle distance. Where was we it howl we from woods or cat crop? It's a good question. Um, let's take a... I think, I think it was worth it. Check. Because Ollie had been following it, I think, hadn't he? Uh, I was he... looking over at the house a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but I don't. Know. there's been some gap since that, then and now. Um, yeah. You had all the shooting between that. Um, but yes, the moors do funny things to sound. Uh, I will take from somebody, please... We'll call it Perception Alertness Diff 8. I have seven. I have something. I haven't logged in. <laughs> so, but my thing's just stuck on a white couch sheet. It's just stuck on a white screen. Right. I, it's not actually updating. Yeah. don't know what's going on. Um, oh, dear. Can you... Reload, maybe. Oh, there we go. Ah, yeah. cool. Oh, that looks that's like just um, that, 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 that's a that's a that's a big boy botch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was on six anyway. So. <clears throat> so, it's impossible to tell where the howling is coming from. The moors make it echo this way and that. A slight chill thought crosses your brain, Tango. Hmm. What if there's more than one source for the howling? What are we doing, folks? I'm going to start pumping away and, uh, like, wheel myself out of Danger Town back towards Tutley Without World as fast as I possibly can. You know, like, pick up as much speed towards the bottom of the hill. Like... uh, Try and maintain momentum across the moors as best I can. That's, uh, do you? Uh, let's let's double check in because you're. If you hit a bluff, you're likely to go flying. Do you have any dots in drive? Nah. <laughs> I'll let you roll it, but this is going to be a fun time for you. <laughs> uh, can I do 
dex or stamina instead of strength as either a, an attempt to maintain it over a long distance or to try and control it at higher speeds. In in the interests of pity, let's let's allow dex. Yay! <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and call that a debate. Okay. I'm rooting for you, man, but also I'm not at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I want to spend a willpower just because like, this is going to be really bad. But at the same time, I'm not going to because this could be really bad in an entertaining way. <laughs> I'm doing this for you guys. For the story. Oh, fuck me! I'm back, baby! <laughs> Two well-earned successes from the Luck Sponge. Everyone better watch out. Uh, and isn't your nature rogue? What does that do? Do you regen by screwing people over? Uh, no, my uh, nature is traditionalist. You know what? Uh, demeanor rogue. Demeanor rogue. Uh, okay. I know we don't generally give willpower for demeanor versus nature, but sod it. I, I think that is a thoroughly roguish way to act, and it's paid off for you. Big Thorn risk, break? big rewards. <laughs> As, as Sebastian Thornbury <laughs> takes off with surprising, alarming speed. What is the top speed on a wheelchair? <laughs> it's going to be going downhill as well, right? Yeah, going Lovely. downhill it's like... terminal velocity, surely, right? Speeding off of... Um, <laughs> of most power wheelchairs average a top speed of approximately five miles an hour. Uh, this isn't a power wheelchair. This is... But yeah, it's not a power wheelchair, but... He's got a fair old ramp up. He's got two successes to his name. He's got the fear of God in him. And he has off-road tracks. <laughs> off-road tracks. <laughs> Skidding away at, what is that, 5, 10, 15 <laughs> miles an hour, the injured lieutenant goes blasting down White Mountain and off towards Tutley without Wold. You can uh, make him out as a distant, fast-moving shadow. <laughs> I I don't know quite what to say to that. <laughs> shall shall we follow him? <laughs> I do. I'm. You know what? I know what to say. I'm very impressed at my workmanship of those three wheelbarrows. That seems to have held up beautifully. I think you used four. <laughs> those four wheelbarrows they held up beautifully. Yeah. Uh, because remember, he's not got two wheelchair wheels. He's got four. <laughs> He's quite, he's he's literally a four wheel drive. Um, the man is basically unstoppable. Reginald Foxley Smythe is currently schlorped, so his replacement, uh, Reginald Loxley Drive, also shares <laughs> Can you his. Can that one? An inspired name. Reginald Loxley Drive, I think. <laughs> I should note that down, I'll forget it. I'm um, just going to call him Robin. God damn it. It's Robin at Loxley. God damn it. God damn it, Carl. Uh, yeah, so Beginald, Beginald thinks this is behavior most unbecoming of a gentleman. And a single tear begins wending its way down his face, his upper lip remaining stiff and unquivering as he weeps inside. Yeah, well, um... Uh... Mm. I don't know whether or not to encourage everyone to leave and then try and shove corpse down the hole and observe them, or just <laughs> head off with everyone. <laughs> I'm torn. It's, uh, what's everyone else feel like doing? Mm. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of interested to see what happens if we dump a body in the in the spooky body pit. Yeah. I'll creep up to you. Should we try and ditch uh, Benjinald? <laughs> Benjinald. Uh, shouldn't you go after him, you know? Yes, he might hurt himself. He's already injured. Down the hill like that. Benjinald looks out into the darkness and down at his single pistol and its one bullet. <laughs> uh, if that is what the gentlemen require, of course. Excellent. Off you trot. <clears throat> he starts <laughs> whistling a jaunty tune to himself. I guess green sleeves 
as he sets off into the howling filled darkness. <laughs> what an agreeable fellow. <laughs> and finishes like around the corner. I just like grab the leg of the nearest corpse and start dragging it towards the hole. <laughs> It's oh, funny. You say this thing counts as doorways or not? I can't remember. <coughs> yeah, doorways in it, yeah. Two. Cool. Two, I believe. Nice. Well, we have an emergency out, needs must, gentlemen. Good, good. Most agreeable. <laughs> Most so agreeable indeed. The two perfectly hale party members watch as the single party member with one arm begins hauling a corpse <laughs> up the mountain. <laughs> Are there already like a few corpses inside the bowl anyway? Uh, I think there are only two up there. Okay. I'll go and Well, I'm assuming the, 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 some of them got fairly close. It's, it's funny how, like, you know, we stopped, we stopped this from happening, and now we're probably going to reactivate whatever happened. In fact, some of these deaths may be entirely avoidable and useless, but also... <laughs> Charitably... You are potentially experimenting under controlled circumstances, whereas you were trying to avert a, what you thought was a very obvious mass sacrifice. I mean, we were, and we are, still. Let's put one more body in, and then you see what happens. Science. Science, as I throw the, the corpse down the hill in towards the basin. Yes, as the uh, three I'm so happy arrive, I'm not there. arrive back up at the <laughs> lip, the two corpses that were here previously... Seem gone. Indeed, a quick search by the pale December moonlight shows not a trace of them, not so much as a wick of blood. No drag marks, no, no. No, no, I saw the blood hitting. Where they were laying, and see if I can see any abnormalities with the soil or anything like that. Uh, I will take then from you, please, Mr. Holborn Twite. A perception awareness roll. Difficulty six. We're still going to dig into the ground. This Finally, just... someone's volunteered to dig. <laughs> now, if um, I roll half wisdom... Um, I, I mean... Yeah, Nicholas, you, you say it like you're joking, but there you th- this is a situation where you can conceivably roll half wisdom. When you cannot roll half wisdom is when you're like trying to intimidate a gang boss with <laughs> no prior context. It's now it only- I think <laughs> if that man can Williams. get into the mind of like his grandma or something. I, I wouldn't wisdom. mind if you were yeah. at least giving it some context, but when you ask to roll half wisdom, you never give it context as to why half I'm calm. One success from Molly. <laughs> yes, uh, Holborn, as you investigate the ground, you can find no trace of either corpse. However, you do note one thing. The sparse moorland grass is unbent. You saw bodies fall here, but in the places where they did, there's now not a trace of even that. Uh, interesting. I'm going to bend down then and get on my knees and break a few blades of grass and smush a few others and then just observe it for a couple of minutes. Yeah, you find nothing untoward happening. In the background, I in the background, I believe Popa Jack was hauling a corpse. I shout over to Popa Jack. I would like some blood here, please. Well, let's just, let's see. I, I what throw point. the corpse at him. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's entirely fair. You probably made significantly <laughs> faster progress up the mountain, unburdened, than he did with his, you know, carried body. <clears throat> How bodily do you want to hurl this corpse, young Nicholas? Uh, flying press thrown. Like that. It's like a kind of. Like- uh, no, like a, like a swing kind of throw, like. All right, strength athletics, stiff seven. It's not necessarily going to clear the ground very much, but you can put forward momentum on it. Where well, those officer game of bowls came in very handy. That's three <laughs> successes. Yeah, Popa Jack was actually the bowls champion in in the officers' mess back in the war uh, for over a year and a half running. It, it was said that he could throw back a live grenade. Now, he was never foolish enough to actually try this. That's oh, what, never. That's what the working class are for. But 
That's not how I lost my arm. Very okay with the uh, the rumor, I suspect. The corpse is sent fair hurling, clearing a solid foot off the ground. <laughs> it lands on the grass around you, stumbling over its ruined wreck of a missing face where it was headshot by uh, Beginald. I take out like a, like one of my oily rags, I suppose, and daub it with some blood, and then put that on the grass. Mm-hmm. And I'll wait a couple more minutes. Okay. After a while of, of furious observation, you note that the handkerchief appears to be getting less bloody. Am I getting less bloody? Oh no. <laughs> Where's the blood inside me going? Uh, yeah, I, I am surprised. Does the blood on the, uh, on, on the crushed grass appear to be disappearing as well? I don't think there was blood on the crushed grass. Yeah, I, I said I, I get my oily rag out, I daub it with some blood, and I put it on the grass that oh, I broke. Um, sorry, I, I thought you were just like putting the handkerchief on the grass. I didn't realize you were trying to wipe something off on the grass. Yeah, it looks like it's just kind of like sliding off the grass pellets and then down towards the mud. Mm. And then from there, as you observe a little bit closer, you can see tiny infinitesimal droplets running in small rivules down, down, down towards the very center of the basin. And the small stone structure. Hmm. Stand up. I think we should investigate and dig out the small stone structure. Well, what do you say? We get this corpse out the hole, pop to town, get a shovel, come back and do some good old digging. Meanwhile, yeah. on his way back to town, uh, Sebastian Thornbury, you've you've cleared a solid half the distance at this point. You you've kept up that momentum. You are your arms are burning. Uh, really should have imposed a physical difficulty malice for the fucking uh, being stabbed thing. Completely forgot to bring that up. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. But, I mean, you know, nothing nothing inspires like danger, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, just to, just to let you know. When you hear a howling to the rear coming from, you think, White Mountain. Meanwhile, back at White Mountain, you hear beneath you a howling. Beneath us? Sorry, um, down the slopes, not directly beneath you. Okay. From approximately the uh, from the north northwest facing slope, the slope between you and Tutley without a world, the slope with the corpses. I turn to Woodrow. I think we maybe just dig with our hands. Uh, I think maybe we use that uh, escape exit you were talking about. It's not really an escape, more as a hideaway for an hour. Oh. Oh. What I posit, or rather hope, is that whatever's howling is quite occupied with the mass of corpses on the mountainside. I think now might be one of our best bets of getting back. We can we'll evade have to go it. down and around then to avoid the, the, the trail we've left. Capital idea. <laughs> Wait, there's another way down the mountain? Yeah, it's, it's, it's only a Pennine mountain. Um, I see. Okay. Which means big hill at best. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, it's it's still it's still a mountain, but it's a mountain in the same way that like the Appalachians are mountains, where they're they're not craggy; they're just big. Okay. It's a hill with notions. I mean, very often that type of mountain range um, is, is older rather than younger. the The Appalachians are some of the oldest mountains on Earth. I think um, that's why they're so small because they've been worn down. I believe. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I don't particularly want to go out into what I'm going to start affectionately calling the killing fields. Um, yeah. What, what do people think? I well, think... Go on. Go on. Go go on. After you. No, they're in a gentleman off. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. No, by all means, you, you go first. I, I go oh, no! Oh, they're Canadian! No, no, uh, by all means, I couldn't. No, you go first. Oh, don't worry, I couldn't possibly. I clearly interrupted you. Go on, Ed. Oh, no, 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 it's absolutely fine. I, I value what you okay, say. Please, okay, you go first. Okay, that'll be, that'll be charisma <laughs> etiquette from the both of you. Difficulty seven, the loser goes first. <laughs> yeah, I'm pumping my arms away as hard as possible to like, keep up with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm not sure here, <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, that, that unfortunately looks like Popajack manages to win the etiquette off. Oh, well, all right then, good sir. Well, as I was going to say, what, uh, oh, what's your character's name, Ollie? Where is it? Uh, oh, I'm Holden. Uh, what is it, Holden, you propose instead of fleeing from the mountains? Do you want to hold up here? Yeah, the stone structure is, I mean, not big, but it's far, it's a damn sight more defensible than, you know, open field. Plus, didn't you say you felt there was some sort of hollow underneath the, in, in the centre of the room? Maybe there's a passageway we can dig down into. I suppose, but I mean, this thing will probably stay here. I doubt we can hold up forever. It's true. Well, if we are going to walk, I say we walk down the side so that we don't hear the howling from and do a large loop. I'd say that makes sense. Yes. Do we have any sort of frame around here? So, c- can you use anything to, as long as it's a frame, you can you can create your your sanctuary. Uh, I need a doorway. Hmm. If it's not a doorway, then it won't work. We we clarified this earlier. If you just like kept a door with you the whole time and it wasn't a doorway to anywhere, it's not symbolically a doorway, so it wouldn't count. Fair enough. Uh, in which case, yeah. Uh, uh, if, then my other suggestion is, yes, we walk down the side of the mountain without the howling, do a large loop around, maybe walk along the road. Hmm. What say you, Popa Jack? Sounds like a splendid idea, yes. <clears throat> How many amphetamines did you take during the war, Pope Jack? I don't know what you're talking about. As with, I mean, at this point, it wouldn't have been too bad. As with all good soldiers, he simply eats four dozen raw eggs for breakfast. <laughs> for lunch, he eats four dozen more. <laughs> so. I remember those raw egg days. <laughs> Sounds like you want someone to lead you in a... I guess this is a stamina stealth for your stealth long-form hike. Popajack, you're you're the officer here, aren't you? Why don't you show us by example? <laughs> seven. <laughs> now, I need him to combat. I don't know do anything sneaky, sneaky about stuff. I'm a or, little stealthy it, myself. Well, oh, okay. Woodrow, it seems like you volunteered to take point, then. Sure thing. Be wary, wary, quiet. Bodge, 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 bodge. Oh, you're muted, Ewan. Can't hear you. Oh, that's strange. You were, like, talking, and your mouth was moving, but we heard nothing. And then you immediately started making sounds. Oh, it might have been the way I was making sounds. Um, I think they might just got caught up by the, no, this is clearly spam noise filter. Ah. Man, that must suck when you get also filtered by a noise cancellation thing. I can't disagree with them, is the thing. <laughs> it happens to me so often, I can't just scream anymore. It saddens oh. me. Uh, it's like... There. Uh, we roll in this creed. Uh, what's the roll? Um, it was Stealth Stamina Diff 7. Stealth Stamina. Yes, some werewolves you out. Uh, no willpower, risky boys. What? Oh, you lucky. One success. One by one, the three of you begin creeping down the other side of the mountain. From the other slope, you can hear occasional mournful howls and the sounds of tearing flesh. Oh, my God. (laughs) 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 Oh, that's great. Step by step, (laughs) the three of you creep down the opposite slope. Down, 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 and then onto the moor, avoiding any trace of a twig or a small animal bone, anything that might give away a snap that might be heard, trying to keep to grass that's damp, but not too damp, but with one success... You feel, God damn it! I've just seen Carl's fucking. (laughs) 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 But with one success, you've uh, you're only able to go at an almost glacial pace, trying to loop down, 
down, down, and then back towards the road. It's been perhaps 45 minutes. You can still hear occasional howling in the distance, and every now and then the snapping of a particularly loud bone. Meanwhile, having made record time, Sebastian Thornbury is just about pulling up outside the uh, Tutley Inn. Oh, um, uh, uh, this is one of those things where I, I kind of like want to make up for the minus two that I missed out uh, when rolling. Um, so I, I'm going to flavor it that I'm so tired that I get to the door and I can't even lift my arm. Like, you know, when you finally get where you're yeah. going and you just collapse sort of thing. No, I totally and- understandable. So, yeah, I'm just going to be, like, bump into the front door and just, like, pass out. I think we had that hike take some hours, maybe, like, four to six even, some ridiculous length of time. It was some stu- surprisingly long hike over like, fairly rough moor terrain, uh, moorland terrain. And you did it in a wheelchair at speed, going at full pelt the whole time. The only reason you presumably didn't crash at the end is because you began to collapse from exhaustion and just about like gently slid to a halt directly in front of the door frame and then slumped out of your wheelchair over the threshold and into the building where you promptly collapsed unconscious. Yeah. Meanwhile, just clearing the 25% mark, Beginald is hiking forward Still desperately whispering, uh, desperately whispering, desperately whistling green sleeves to himself, trying to ignore the sounds of bone snapping and howling, carrying across the <laughs> wind behind him. Uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> this too shall pass, hopefully. <laughs> this too shall pass does not apply in this situation. Well, yeah, it does. You know, this too, the werewolves, shall pass. Hopefully, the werewolves fuck off eventually. <clears throat> main party. You're just beginning, after having put quite some distance, maybe a, almost an hour, slightly over, uh, walk between yourselves and White Mountain. Just beginning to swing round towards the road. When you hear something nearby, the vague rustling of a bush, and then what might be a soft, padded paw, scratching a little bit too hard with its nails against a rock as it moves stealthily. You're entering through. Uh, you're entering a an area of low rising, but rugged hills, small tufts of land concealing the swell of the landscape. Mm-hmm. What do uh, I would like to continue stealthing, but with no regard for those following me. <laughs> <laughs> I happily lose them as well as I drift through the hills towards the road. <laughs> How our party got eaten by werewolves in one night, but it wasn't the guy in the wheelchair. In spotation. So, the two at the back. It seems like Woodrow Tango has changed his pace slightly. Like, he's, he's sleuthing forwards a lot harder and faster. I want to curse you so badly, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Just to curse your stealth rolls. Just. <laughs> what are we doing at the back? Uh, stealthing. <laughs> keeping up. Keeping pace. Okay. Yeah, trying to keep pace as well. Trying I to keep pace. Well, in that case, I'm afraid it sounds like it's going to be a stealth dex from the, a stealth stamina from the both of you for the hiking. Uh, oh, Dis seven. I, I literally do not have any willpower. I'm rolling two dice for yeah, this. I'm, I'm afraid Creed has engaged the polar, bar, uh, the polar bear contingent. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I jumped to that real quick. <laughs> I, I, I think I make it. Right? Yeah, if it's like a nearby fox or something, you're going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Dear. That's a success apiece. The two of you, fueled by a desperate desire not to be eaten by some unknowable yeah. primeval yeah. beast managed to keep a fairly even pace. That's when the three of you see it, slinking at almost the horizon line in front of you, keeping low so that the swell of its back is only just barely visible and only because you were already on edge. Something moving on four legs, almost feline, but stockier, sturdier, with a shorter tail. 
fucking Moore's lines. <laughs> Do you have any dots in Animal Ken? No, no, I don't. Yeah, you could probably keep a lion out here. Like, it can eat sheep, right? I mean, cougars have existed on the mountain before, on the moors, rather. I mean, why not lions, right? What are we doing, folks? Um, did it, is it clear that this thing has spotted us? Is it is it stalking us currently? That's a good question. Do you have any animal, Ken? <laughs> no, I don't. Have any knowledge of tactics? I mean, is it looking at us? <laughs> You haven't seen its eyes. I figure yeah. either it's circling us or looking for us. Either way, it's probably not great. Um, I, I, I have um, officer training and whatnot, so officer training. Whatever that comes, and that, like for tactics and whatnot. <laughs> considering, <laughs> okay, okay, you you strongly suspect you're being circled by something that may well have your scent. Uh, obviously, scenting would not come under officer's training, um, but I'm going to assume there's a decent chance you've served somewhere other than the war, given you were like, you're, you're 35, so you've probably been in the army for quite a while. All that lead in his brain makes him very good at things. I don't know where that was going. That was a weird uh, uh, one. Hence, yeah. I think it's circling us. Well, we all just have a bullet of peace, right? Yeah. Yes, and I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't have any doorways. <laughs> we How could about maybe make door? one. We How could make we... a symbolic doorway out of twigs, maybe. And then we walk through it a few times. Yes. That way it becomes a real doorway. Uh, if you really like, you could try digging a significant hole into the side of one of these hills, but I imagine it would take some time. Mm. Also quite difficult <laughs> to find twigs. In any great number on the moor. Not that, that was the only <laughs> hole in that plan, but. <laughs> um, How about um, we try to intimidate it? You want to try and. In- oh, yes, you should try and intimidate it. Ah, well, no. <laughs> you <You're for sure. laughs> <laughs> throw everyone under the bus, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the officer should lead by example. I'm just providing an example to lead by. Uh, we could try drawing straws, <laughs> seeing does who makes a break for it first. Does this thing look bigger than, than the werewolves, that, or smaller than the werewolves that would be hunting us? It was a shadow moving in the distance, in a long, lazy circle around you, just barely visible against the uh, darkened horizon. It's extremely difficult to ascertain its size. Could be the size of a sheep, could be the size of a decently large automobile. Well, I don't think there's any large automobiles outside tonight hunting us. At least I really hope not. Um, let's make it back to the road, I say. Maybe there's some trees, it appears, next to the road. We could maybe hide up there and see if we can potentially lose lose it there. I'd like to curse it, if I can see it. Yeah, you can't really. You've been catching glimpses of it. Uh, what was your suggestion? Sorry, Holden. There appears to be a thicket of trees up ahead, a small one, maybe. I suggest we... Uh, that is a we single head- tree on the map that's doing <laughs> fucking legwork there. Ollie. I appreciate what you're saying, that these are not literal representations of exact features, but that is very clearly one tree. I would assume this is three <laughs> to five trees represented by one. <laughs> you a tree, which in my mind is a thicket. Damn it, let me have this. I don't want to die. Do you have any dots in forestry? <laughs> Fellas, I see a tree. I have a dot in survival. <laughs> All right, you have a dot in survival. We'll count that. Sure. You can see a very small thicket in the distance. <laughs> this is not a thick thicket. I'll, I'll live with that. Um, I suggest we hide perhaps in, up in those trees and see if we can get a better vantage point of what it is that is maybe hunting us. Yeah, you and your zero dots of animal can are pretty sure that cats can't climb trees. (laughs) (laughs) It's a cat. (laughs) Instead, with feline grace, that doesn't necessarily mean a cat. That can mean a polecat, that can mean a civet, that can mean... I mean, you were the one who was talking about lion. (laughs) It's true. But that's because there are such things as big cats on the moors. This is metagaming, though. I mean, I know this in real life. There was one cat that one... There's been a couple of cats 
and all the time. <laughs> it's like one, like one cat. There's been a couple of cats. All right, there's been like two or three. <laughs> <laughs> Point being, where are we at, folks? Uh, I think we're trying to get to that thicket. Free plan. Let's start. If I, if I can get a line of sight on this thing, I could possibly. Um, uh, disadvantage is tracking us. <laughs> or draw its attention to us. Will, will something know where it's been cursed from? No, no. Right. I think it depends Purely, yeah. on the nature of the curse, honestly. They are verbal. It's uh, Actually, it's a, th- a cathartic release, so I could do a gesture or something, like up yours or something. <laughs> Just like a gesture or something is absolutely fine. <laughs> You've been doing yours verbally so far, though, haven't you? Uh, I can do, but it can take any cathartic form. Okay. So, how are we making for the trees, folks? Give me, like, I want to I wanna hear what the movement is here. Are you moving as a team? Are you moving in, in uh, individual groups? Are you, like, an all-out run? Or Because you've been trying to sneak, and you've even been sneaking quite successfully, but there's a decent chance that it's got your scent, and you can't easily hide that. Um... We've got any cheese and onion uh, sandwiches? No, Beginald was carrying them. I could have had some sandwiches each. Damn it. You're hungry in a time like this. We forgot to carry our pocket sandwiches. (laughs) (laughs) Foolish. I, de- I definitely do have my own sandwiches. So I swiped them as Beginald was oh, making yeah, them. Yeah, actually, that's true. You did. Because yeah. Beginald, oh, do you have many pockets? Do you yeah. have any strong smelling sandwiches? I, I, I vaguely remember they were ham and cheese. So these yeah. could be quite. I, I don't think they were especially. You could maybe wet its appetite with ham, but that. <laughs> Toss a sandwich out there, see if it distracts. Yeah. Seems counterproductive. Come on, folks, there's there's quite a bit of distance from the little range of hillocks you're in between yourselves and this tiny copse what, of trees. What would a sprint look like? Um, it's not easy sprinting terrain. You're, you're more talking like an all-out run over uh, maybe 30 minutes. 20 now, to 30, depending on successes. What I suggest is we all take a pee, and then we split up, and we make our way to the thicket. Why would we split up? Because if it's tracking scent, A, the P will offset that, hopefully, and then B, by splitting up, we split our scent signature. Uh, mm, It has a certain amount of sense to it, but I feel there is something deeply, deeply wrong with this line of thinking as well. It sounds sensible enough to me. Splitting up? I'm game. We're about to be game. I just, we already are game. Go on, let's have a wait. Yep. I'll just turn around. <laughs> I am not oh. going to be, and I'm just going to. Yes, you can always tell yeah. a public school man by his willingness to urinate in public. Uh, <laughs> making sure not to black myself or anything like that. Like, making it to, like. That would be counterproductive. <laughs> sure. So forth. But I'm busy, about to get mauled to death, <laughs> waiting around to take a you, slash. Two of you turn around and take powerful slashes right <laughs> on the ground. As I'm just immediately going to start walking. Holman just... Yeah, he's he's done with this. If he's going to die, he's going to die with a full bladder. As God <laughs> wait, wait. intended. Just, just to clarify, like, where are you pissing? Just on the ground. Just on the ground, right next to where we are right now. Yeah. Okay. Where we've been not, discussing things for a minute. Yeah. They're not really? urinating on each other. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it'll come up and just smell the urine and go like, "What the fuck?" And just completely like knock it off our scent. Hopefully, and then follow the scent of urine that we've just expelled that will be on our trousers or on our hands or. No, on that's why I said I was being very careful not to get any urine on myself. It's fine. I. You do realise it comes from within your body. <laughs> fine. Fine. Please wipe it on the ground and get it on the patch of stinging metals, please. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I can always two... take the trousers off. I don't need the clothes. Uh, that's not. A lifelong commitment to do this and begins here. <laughs> <laughs> this one time on the moors <laughs> saved my life, it did. 
Okay. Better out than in, as I always so, said. So, in that case, I will take... You're just doing a, a, a straight run, right, Ollie? Uh, yeah, I'll start running, I suppose. Okay, just so a normal... st- from Holborn, then, I will take Stamina Athletics, please. Difficulty... We'll call it Diff 7. Cool, that's a 3D turn. Any chance I could use Strength, because it's quite difficult terrain, so I'm more powering for a, a, like a heavy jog Not rather than... like run. a 20-minute, almost all-out run. Uh, you, I mean, you can do a jog if you like, but that'll change the... T- oh, no, well, you've already succeeded anyway. Yep. One success. Okay, let's see who gets polar bad. Yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Team Piss Nobles, the oh. worst team... <laughs> I'll zip up and turn around and see Holden yep. just bolting and then just immediately <laughs> bolt in another direction. <laughs> I'm just picturing like a trident direction. formation. Yeah, a trident formation for the three of you. Yeah, you guys don't your dicks out, just leaving a handy trail of scent behind no, you. No, one of them. Zipped up. One of them <laughs> specifically said he zipped up. I put my penis away as well. I mean, that's a good question. Were you stripping down, or uh, are you? No, <laughs> having a normal piss, being careful not to get anything on me, put it back in. <laughs> It really, it really. I cannot express how much it bothers me that this is arguably one of your more cogent plans, young Nicholas. I, I, I feel like we should have used the scatter diagram to see which way the wind was going and see if they pissed into the wind. Oh, I, 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 I did. Oh, okay. Uh, um, and I'd like to bolt it as well. Uh, so the other two bolting, I'm bolting. Uh, again, yeah. trident formation. <laughs> okay, trident formation. Then for the two of you as well, I will also take uh, stamina athletics, please. Set. I'm gonna use a willpower. So that's stamina athletics, you see. <laughs> oh my god. It's out Moore's cat. Uh, I'll spend a willpower as well. Fuck it. Cowards. Oh. That's actually yeah, pretty uh, merited as that's <laughs> that's, a, that's a fail, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, it's not a fail from him. His willpower can't be cancelled. Oh that's true, yes. Uh, what was the diff again? The diff was seven. Which puts Timothy Popajak on three successes, Great. as despite the fact that he reeks of, I don't know, who's the only person who got asparagus sandwiches, I guess, and and therefore, uh, but nevertheless, on three successes, he he thoroughly powers ahead of the two of you. One on man, just like I'm lighter than you bastards. <laughs> no bladder, no arm. <laughs> That's an yeah, officer. This. Carry out over the moors. That was yeah. out of character. God damn it! And behind you, <laughs> as the two of you, Woodrow and Holman, are going at a fairly similar pace, <coughs> you hear a soft but insistent padding start to grow louder and louder and louder, and then a snarl, a strong feline snarl. Fucking moors cat. Can I, uh, Carl? Can I get a, can I get a D two? Uh, if it's a one, Ollie. If it's a two, Creed. Oh, oh dear! Sorry. Woodrow Tango. <laughs> well, in fact, yeah. Let's hold him tight. You're you're going. You're running. One second. Woodrow's next to you. The next. The padding stopped. There's a heavy thud, and he isn't. All you can do <laughs> is to keep making a break for the tree line. I stop and I turn around, skidding to a stop, like to and say, pull out my rifle in one fluid motion. And uh, gonna, I'm gonna, if I see the creature, I'm cursing it. Oh no, you're you're way ahead of the other two at this point. You're, oh, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm you're way right. past the halfway point. Uh, One wants to turn towards the back <laughs> of Popa Jack, you'll... but it swings around. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't hear the padding stop then, I'm assuming. No, you'd hear a rifle crack, but that's, uh, that's not happening. I may turn around yet. at the rifle crack then. Yeah. <laughs> so as uh, Holborn skids to a stop, turns around, trying to, bring his, uh, trying to unsling his rifle and bring it to bear, the beast already has you on your uh, pinned on your front, Woodrow. As you fail, uh, feel a, a heavy, pressing weight impact you from behind, slam you into the ground. Then a pair of slobbering, disgusting, hot breath jaws begin to almost clamp around your neck, reaching down, down, down. 
This is it. This is the end. About two metres in front of you, you hear a small, soft meowing. So you peek out through one eye. There's what appears to be a house cat sitting there, staring at you. The jaws are still wrapped around your head. Um, hello there. (laughs) And then the jaws withdraw. Drool, hot and wet, falls on the back of your neck. The cat sits up on its hind legs and makes what appears to be a dismissive motion at the larger feline monstrosity pinning you down. It's at about this point that uh, Holborn Twite there has managed to unholster his uh, unholster, unsling his rifle and brought it to bear. Holborn, you can see what looks to be a smaller feline, maybe a baby, staring at the two of them, and the monster's just about brought its uh, mouth. It looks like it's kind of swinging away from Woodrow, but you're not sure why. I'm keeping my rifle trained on the feline monstrosity. I'm not going to fire, because I just saw a cat make a dismissive guest gesture, and that's not something you see every day. Foot by foot, the large, now you look at it, simply deep brown-haired cat, thick and stock, muscly like a horse, takes each paw off of Woodrow. <laughs> the smaller house cat, now clearly a junior, Hops up deftly onto its back, seems to curl up in what looks like the crook of its neck, and it begins sauntering off back in the direction of the distant tour at the point. Fuck me, we just got taken over by cat clock, didn't we? Oh, um, fuck. Thank you. <laughs> Line of fucking Creed's characters. In the distance. <laughs> Woodrow looks up, thoroughly bemused. An yeah. equally baffled Seb- uh, Sebastian, an equally baffled Holborn looks back at him. I get the strongest deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly a unique experience. What, what on earth happened there? I'm quite flabbergasted. Do you know these cats? <laughs> no. <laughs> Because Timothy made it to the little. <laughs> oh yeah, Timothy Popejack, you've you've just about touched down at the the trees, and you're you're kind of looking at shimmying your way up, but you can see in the distance what looks like uh, Holborn Twite with his gun held like at a limp, almost ready to snap up and and fire. He's difficult to make out in the gloom. Holborn is very confused at the incredibly strong feeling of deja vu he got. And that just helps helps Woodrow to his feet, and uh, I guess begins a casual walk back after a, if if he can hear no more padding and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and let's walk towards Catclot Mountain itself. Did they did they look like they wanted us to follow them? Uh, I don't think you were close enough to really see anything. They and Woodrow was face down in the dirt. <clears throat> well. I'll chalk that one up, a net victory, (laughs) and just head back. (laughs) Yes, yes, I suppose we should. On the way there, on the way to the road, you know, it's just the two of us, I want to start espousing uh, communism and its various benefits. How do you feel about this, Woodrow? Oh, there's lots of... mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Right. Hmm. Class, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. You're a man of class, <laughs> and I don't like to struggle. Sounds to me like the current system you're describing benefits me quite well. <laughs> it benefits us quite well, comrade. <laughs> oh no, not your system, the current one. It's very easy for these working class types to whine about the ills of feudalism when they've never benefited from being a feudal lord of any kind themselves. Funny that. <laughs> Don't knock it to the sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Just need to work hard and you'll get there. Get some of them trickle-down bootstraps. I yeah. keep hearing cool. exactly. people talk about. 
pull yourself up by the stuff trickling down your bootstraps. And so, <laughs> the three of you reunite at the cops, and then have a long but boring walk back to Tutley without Wold. The sun, Last time I have to go to Tutley with Wold. The sun comes up. Now, I've got a question. Yes? We survived that. Mm-hmm. Terrifying, and, and we split up, as suggested. Do I get my my uh, my my, na- my nature? What's it's perfectionist, nature? and it says um, if uh, we succeed, if someone succeeds, it's like because of <laughs> sort of my suggestion. Reluctantly. <laughs> Your plan, even if they had killed Woodrow, would have preserved one uh, the majority of the group, which was your intention. Wasn't it technically my plan, though, to go down the side of the White Mountain and head towards the, tr- the thicket? No. Well, the thicket was me. The, the pissing. Thicket, the thicket was you, but even then, going down White Mountain, that was getting away from the, the monster on the opposite well, side of the slopes. Then you ran into to another... Good friend, and make sure Nick doesn't get willpower because he should suffer like I am. <laughs> Love you, man. You're all suffering. None of you've slept. None of you really got any restful sleep the night before. You're dog tired by the time you arrive at maybe 10 a.m. Was that a, a uh, reluctant willpower for me? Was that it? was a reluctant willpower for you, yes. Uh, I'm back doing at the, that in five minutes. I'm just going to grab a quick drink and something to eat. Five. Yeah, back at the, uh, the Tutley Inn. A rather exhausted Beginald has prepared a breakfast, and as the three of you cross the threshold, Sebastian Thornbury shakes awake from his groggy, exhaustion-induced coma. Sebastian, you clearly remember passing out face down on the floor, but someone has positioned you in a chair and uh, appears groomed you, potentially washed you, and provided what looks to be a moderately serviceable roast chicken in front of you. At least, you know, given the conditions. Uh, I'm going to momentarily forget all of my woes. And, uh, y- you know, like when you've had enough stress that when something familiar pops up, you, you cling to it like dear life. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to happily eat my chicken while completely in denial about everything else. That's fair. (laughs) Not even a word of greeting to your companions. This is not the time for greeting. This is the time for chicken and familiar routines. Mm. (coughs) Beginal welcomes the other three back. Welcome, my lords. I have fed the prisoner. And, uh, of course, Lord... His brain goes foggy for a moment. Thornbury... Well, excellent work. Quite the odd adventure we had there. Uh, thank you, Lord Tango. Uh, did I assume you met with some trouble on the way back. Uh, a surprisingly less trouble than we expected. A large cat did pursue us on the way, and at some point pinned me by my neck. But then a smaller cat came, a <laughs> said hello to it, meowed a bit, and they both left together. Don't really know quite what to make of it. Yes, I think you're hallucinating. This is what happens when you hang out with the lower classes for too long. I hope you're right. <laughs> Poke for Ollie's character while he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> um, like, through mouthfuls of chicken, I'm just like, mur, 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 mur. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to find a newspaper. Vegetables. <laughs> Beginald's eye twitches gently at the gentleman eating in a most ungentlemanly fashion behind him. <laughs> uh, I'd like to like, uh, uh, find a newspaper and get a cup of tea, please. Yeah, I'd like to f- find some food, get a cup of, and look around the place for any books that might be vaguely interesting. There is a fresh pot on the table uh, and a passing breakfast, considering... I'll just have some, some toast and smoke my pipe. Beginald manages to rustle up a newspaper, but you've read more than half of it the day before. Uh, as for books, uh, 
that's an interesting point. Let's, do you have academics, Tango? Yeah. Yeah, it'll uh, take two, I think. Perception academics, please, diff six. Hmm. Come on, two successes. Yeah, you, you find an interesting book on uh, the history of the local tribe in pre Romanic Romanic in pre Roman times. With just a few pages into it, going, oh, intriguing. When there's a uh, a noise from the doorway still hanging open. What appears to be perhaps a particularly large but lean wolfhound <laughs> staggers in, collapses on the floor. It's whimpering gently. Beginald looks to the uh, three of you. Well, the two of you. One of you is shoveling chicken into his face uh, for instruction. Are there you any good with animals? It seems peaceful and in need at the moment. Does it look similar to uh, when the um, uh, the werewolf that we killed at the was the fucking pub slash in the egg, egg, egg arms. Arms. arms yeah when we killed that one does it is it like the same breed that one's somewhat fuzzy in your memory honestly uh, that looked more like a wolf but also it was i suppose not dissimilar that said how many dots in animal ken do you have zero yeah, yeah, one in academics you would you would really struggle to tell a uh Somewhat unshaggy wolf from a particularly shaggy wolfhound. Interesting. Beginal nods at the three of you and goes to procure what meat he can from the kitchen. Do be careful. It might be that wolf. It might be uh, one of those wolves, but not in its big form. I'll um, kneel down where I am and look towards it and looks well. Now don't worry. We'll try and tend to best we can. It whimpers gently, stretches a paw out towards you. It looks emaciated. But unlike most of the other animals you've seen, it doesn't seem maddened per se. Ollie, you're muted. Are we sure this isn't a werewolf? That's what I was just saying. No. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have my concerns. Um, actually, can I backtrack its tracks? Uh, not over cobbled streets, you can't. Fuck. You could have left mud on them. Yeah, you'd be able to find it like a little ways out, but unless it came straight in for, and it entered on the street side, then um, you're, you're not going to be able to track it through Tutley, unfortunately. Is it bloody at all? doesn't look bloody, just thin, like it's not eaten in forever. And considering the situation with the local townsfolk, that's not unlikely. Does it have a collar? It does not have a collar. And it does look poorly groomed. But again, I suppose that's understandable. Beginald. Any blood? Sorry? Any blood on its teeth or claws? Mm. Are you going to go up and take a look? I'll take a little poke with it, yes. You go up, grasp it by the paw, and start trying to look over its claws. Do you got claws on a dog? Yeah. 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 Toenails. I don't think I'd call them toenails. That sounds weird. No, they are toenails. They're not claws. Huh. I've never owned, never owned a dog. They said they have little claws. They, they, they are claws... You're right, because claws and toenails are made of the same stuff, basically. Yeah, keratin. Yeah. So, so it's, it's... hair. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's just different, isn't it? The way the cats have claws and whatnot, but it's a dog's like claws, claws aren't sharp. Yeah, yeah. Claws, claws are sharp. Toenails aren't as... You know, they're not, they're not weapons. I mean, they're still classified as claws. Yeah. I feel like Ollie's going to fall down a deep rabbit hole now of looking up the exact definition of what constitutes a claw. So, with the dog's alleged claws <clears throat> in, in your grip, you begin looking over them in detail. The dog tries to, or the wolfhound rather, tries to try and, uh, tries to try and, tries to like 
weakly yank its paw out of your grip and, and pull its lips back into something passing for a snarl. But it, it's so weak. Stop being such a baby. You can't make out anything on the first foot. You move to the next. Nothing there, though it's clear that the animal isn't happy with your treatment. I say, no, no, let us feed it first. It might be more agreeable. Beginald comes in with a somewhat adequate-looking ham bone and uh, some last shanks of anonymous meat. I pulled these from the freezers, my lords. Are they, like, frozen solid, or are they just cold? Uh, they're cold, they're going warm. The town's going to start sort of Project Zomboid style, running out of food probably sometime soon. They'll take it and offer some to the dog. Speak it to him softly. Happily starts munching down on the meat, even in its frozen form. I'll take intelligence occult from someone, please. Diff six. Uh, I'd have seven. I have a cult. I can. What else was it? It was intelligence yeah. occult. Diff six. I can roll that. People need it. Uh, well, how many dots do they do? Will you have to pedal? Uh, seven. Got... Oh, same thing. Go for it. Yeah, four successes. Holborn, you immediately notice that the dog actually seems, wi- uh, the wolfhound actually seems willing to eat. Unlike every other animal and resident you've seen in the town so far. And now that you look down at the toast that Beginald's provided for yourself, you notice something perhaps a tad alarming. Your own desire to eat seems to be fading slightly. You know you're starving, but this toast just does not look in any way appetizing. So my specialty is in enchantments. I know I didn't get a 10 there, but um, does this strike me as a classic sort of enchantment? I think you'd potentially be aware of fairy tales with particularly powerful members of the Fae. Uh, But if you're dealing with like a she-lord of some kind, then uh, you'd basically be fucked. Obviously, you've never met those and have no evidence they exist. But uh, at least per fairy tales, they're, they're some of the more powerful entities in all of British folklore. <coughs> Chef, you're playing with a fey lord who's cosplaying as Julius Caesar. This day could not get any worse. What are we doing, folks? I'm going to belch loudly. Yeah. I ask if anyone else is feeling well, as hungry as they should be. Now at that, Woodrow Tango and uh, Popa Jack... You both note that even though food's been provided and you sat down with the intention of eating initially, Popa Jack, you've been more looking at your newspaper and and, uh, Tango, you had started on your book and you feel hungry, but neither of you particularly want to eat what's been put in front of you. Hmm. Sebastian, I'm noticing that. Sorry. I was saying, I'm noticing that. Can I try and force myself to eat as much as possible? Yeah, it's actually the same thing. I will point out, as someone who's on amphetamines and has this very, very similar thing where you're hungry, but you don't feel like eating. It's very, very hard to put food down. It is. Unless you're very hungry. It, it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a psychological thing rather than a, a hunger thing. So, I will point it out, it's very hard to do. Sure. It's fair. Beginald uh, also pipes up. <clears throat> I also haven't eaten and wasn't planning on it. But Sebastian, is he all right? I mean, Sebastian's just wolfed down most of a roast chicken, so he seems to be motoring along surprisingly well. But Sebastian did also go through uh, what is, by all accounts, one of the world's great speed wheelchair marathons. Man, puts the fucking cheese rolling to shame (laughs) down mountains. I would also say that this isn't like eating consciously as well. It is... Like, I say doing something out of rote memorization, like... He did describe this very explicitly, in fact, actually. Or you did, rather, yeah. Well, if I literally can't force myself to eat, I'll just offer my food to the dog and hang out with him for uh, a while. I will st- we'll, we'll, we'll give you a roll for it. I will take... You know what? I'll take permanent willpower, diff 9. 
led to the same. Hey, yeah, anyone who wants to force themselves to can. That's two successes from Tango, who actually is able to start forcing down as much food as he can. It's extremely difficult going, and you're honestly making yourself feel monumentally ill. Mm. But you're managing it. Popajack, likewise, with all the rigors of the war drilled into him, has had to force himself to eat when nearby he can smell the corpses of comrades and even just commoners putrefying in the muck. Uh, Holborn, did you want to give it a go as well? A second, sorry? Did you want to give it a go as well? Yeah, sure. Are you going to draw? It was Holden? permanent willpower, diff 9. Ah. Um, you don't have wait. to, it's just an option. Sorry, say again, I was I, I, I was drinking my beer, so I actually didn't hear what you wanted me to do before that. Uh, it was, do you want to try and force yourself to eat? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm not going to. It's fair. The dog seems I don't have any willpower. Um, it, it's permanent willpower for the record. Oh. So I'd lose a permanent willpower no, to do no, this. You, you roll <coughs> permanent willpower as a pool. Oh, sorry. I must, yeah, then I'll, then I'll roll it, yeah. Um, I think technically you lose a permanent willpower if you botch, but I don't think I'd enforce that rule conceivably unless it's super narratively inappropriate. Inappropriate? Appropriate. Well, I have uh, 5D. Yeah, five be ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah, it. I make it. Also a success. Yeah. All of you <laughs> go into fucking fight or flight survival mode. This is this is the 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 speed with which people eat when they've seen comrades turned into nothing but mince meat, and then still able to get through their single ration mince pie. Hmm. Reginald in the background simply quietly balks at the spectacle. On, um, on. This is really off topic and horribly ignorant, but can you get mince pies in uh, Sweden? Because I know that they're not very popular the rest of the world over. Uh, I don't think so. I have trouble explaining the concept of mince meat to people. Um, which is weird because they go really well. Um, you can probably get some at the British shop, I guess. But everything there is super expensive. It's like £1.20 for a Monster Munch. Fuck me. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I could make some, but I'd need to get some mincemeat somehow. And, you know, like, ideally, obviously, mincemeat, you start on it the year before, so. Amazon? Maybe Amazon. Amazon, send me some year old mincemeat. <laughs> Please, Bezos, you're my only hope. That is a horrifying thought. Sorry for that, Reddit. So hilariously, when he went up, and you know, pace. Yeah, it's a pace. So, what are we doing, folks? All of you are ungodly tired. You can feel your will beginning to sap away. You force yourselves to eat what you can, and none of you are feeling that unnatural thirst quite yet. But nevertheless, whatever's overtaking the townsfolk is very clearly starting to overtake you as well. Well, um. Bring any leftovers to the dog. Don't plan on saving. And uh, hang out with the dog. Maybe even just try and take a nap on him. Come friends. <laughs> I can't tell if you're trying to befriend the dog or hedging your bets on it's a magical dog. Both. <laughs> Wonder dog! <laughs> Wonder dog! <laughs> That was great fun. It's going nuts, people, on Tuesday. Um, the dog I... continues to munch his way through the leftovers provided, but seems to wriggle away when you try to lay down on top of him, even just resting your head. What was that, Holden? Um, where did the dog appear from? It just, just appeared in the pub, did it? Yeah, just Same kind of like <laughs> sauntered over the threshold and collapsed. No, I... I think I'm going to go up to my private bedroom and fall asleep. So uh, pass out till nightfall. I'll continue seeing if I can familiarise myself with the dog. See if he lets me pet him, get him to sniff me in. All right, charisma, animal, Ken, hidden difficulty. Uh, I only have charisma. Uh, I'm going to use willpower. 
Yeah, screw your hidden difficulty. <laughs> yeah. Net one success with your willpower. You cheesy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> The dog does not seem happy with the amount of physical contact that's happening here so quickly, but it's also too weak to resist, and past a certain point, just kind of stops. And as long as you don't touch it in particularly sensitive areas, like its mouth, its claws, that type of thing, alleged claws, it uh, lets you get away with more or less what you want. It seems to take less than you'd hoped to scratch its behind the ear, though. What's everyone else doing? Um, upon finishing my chicken, because I mean, it's going to happen sooner or later, right? Like, I kind of do that thing where I'm just like trying to find some sort of distraction um, and presumably failing to do so. Um, I figure that I should peruse the area for um, digging implements. You do have a built in, you know, you are a giant wheelbarrow right now. No, You're he the does not have man. a wheelbarrow in the chair. The chair is built out of bits of wheelbarrow. That does not imply that there, it has a wheelbarrow compartment. I'm implying that it's He's... essentially going to have some sort of, you know, concave shape. Therefore, dirt could be placed in it if needed. No, it is a chair. Well, I'm the one who designed there it. There is concave. You could not put dirt in it without turfing him out of it. And besides, like a wheelbarrow in itself isn't a digging implement. Yeah. Also that. I, well, it depends we, how no, hard you jam into the floor. I will, I will call. There is no like you cannot make something. You cannot make thing out of uh, make something out of another thing, and then say it still retains all of the properties of the thing you salvaged it from. If you want Not a all. wheelbarrow. You can salvage a wheelbarrow from anywhere else in town, but the wheelchair does not function except as a fairly bad wheelbarrow at this point. Ah, oh, but it can function as one. You can put it's some a very dirt bad on one. it. It's just not at all fit for purpose. Aha! Digging implements. I mean, I'm sure the garden centre should have like some shovels and such like that. Indeed, the Tutley Without Walled Garden Centre. Dare you risk it? I'm afraid. But I'll yes. go help. I'll go help him out. I see him him exiting, and I don't want to stay with the dog, and I don't want to deal with the uh, with the working class upstairs. So we'll go to the. Uh... You know that Beginald has more or less passed out, face down on the sofa. He seems yes, to be out cold. Deserves a rest. Don't think we we'll, we'll get any rest by sleeping anyway. So let's no, power on through. The two of you are dog tired. Utterly, utterly exhausted. Upstairs, Holman Dwight has collapsed into a sadly not dreamless sleep. I don't know what time today. Uh, yeah, no dreamless sleep actually. In fact, um, and eventually Woodrow Tango drifts off as he tries to socialise with the potentially magical dog. Wonder dog. <laughs> I will kill the dog. He is immortal. Doesn't matter how many times you kill him. <sighs> Rage. <laughs> the Totally Well Walled Garden Centre is situated just outside of town and not quite a straight shot across. Uh, it's more of an uneven line to a uh, uh, at a slight angle away from where you are. Maybe a eighty percent, seventy percent of the way across town. The town itself is eerily silent. You can occasionally hear broken sobs and cries. And every now and then you pass someone who's injured themselves just going about their day-to-day -day and lies where they've fallen. Invariably, these people turn out to be dead. As a result, your walk is melancholy and, with the complete lack of birds, utterly silent. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is quite fast, so... There's something to be said for horrifying magical effects murdering entire villages and ecosystems, I guess. Yes. Happens to the best of us. Hopefully not, though. Hopefully not. The garden centre is not in disarray. If anything, it's suspiciously well-organised. There's been no looting in town. 
uh, and there's little sign of anything rotting here yet. No one's turned up for work, and you can see no easily spotable corpses. Instead, is a, uh, there's a, a bevy of supplies. The village looks like it must have been relatively untouched by the uh, rigours of the Great War, at least by the standards of the mainland British Isles. And it's got, if anything, an alarming number of things in stock, implying that Tutley without Wold was somehow either withholding or getting extra supplies, perhaps from uh, sold illegally second-hand from the local barracks. What are we doing, Jones? Tutley without Wold, but Tutley with many gardening supplies. <laughs> what do we fancy? You're muted, Carl. I think we're looking for... Um... Shovels and digging implements. Yeah. Do they have shotgun ammo they have? I don't know if you carry shotgun ammo at a garden centre. Oh, actually, you've got the car with you. There's the, you had one bullet left in each of your guns, but there's there's more ammo in the car, so that's unnecessary. Oh, yeah. That'd be fine, yeah. Like, Did we... Um, is, is there any sort of, like, powered digging implement there? And when are we set? We're the 1920s. 19... Or 1919. Well, 1919, is it? Yeah. Yeah, like jackhammers so, are a thing. Like power tools are a exist. thing. There, there do exist power diggers in this time and age. I don't know how small they get, though. I don't think they're selling them at garden centres, though. Yeah. God, I completely screwed the spelling on that one. Um, Shells are a thing, but they are quite big. Yeah, you probably wouldn't get them at a garden centre. Oh, yeah, you have the ones that are giant. Oh, no, those are for a little bit later. The ones that look like a shed with caterpillar tracks. Those are excellent. Uh, I don't know, actually. They're like mid 19th century. I don't think they'd sell them at garden centres, honestly, I'm afraid. No, I, I think you're right. I don't think they would. They're, they're more like uh, construction equipment at this point. Yeah. I mean, they still are, to be fair. Um,. So I'll be right back. One minute. Fair. Okay. Well, in that case, as uh, Sebastian zones out a little bit with the sleep deprivation, Popa Jack, you're relatively easily able to find a spade, two spades, a whole shelf of spades, a rack, I guess. How many spades do you want? Uh, there's what one, two, three, four, possibly five of us. I'll get five. Uh, bitter experience has taught you that though you can wield a spade with one arm, um, it's decidedly and disproportionately more difficult. Can I get a trowel for myself? You can get trowels for as many people as you like. It's a garden centre. No, I'm getting a trowel for myself. Everyone else can have a spade. Uh, trowel one-handed, spade two-handed. Find an early 20th century trolley. Oh, I'll, I'll use um, Sebastian. It's fine. I'll just put the you stuff in his lap. You cannot use Sebastian for this. It's all going to fall out. He is not no, no, suitable. It, if if no, it's a spade... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hard vetoing it. You can't use him for that. It'll all fall off. And also, his wheelchair is not automatic, so he literally won't be able to move unless you wheel him. Uh, yeah, I'm good. back, and I also would not agree to this. Like, I mean, I can hold some, but you would have to push me. He's got a trolley. He's refusing to use it. What? Use the trolley? You could use a wheelbarrow alternatively if you like. You cannot use the occupied wheelchair. So I'll hold the wheelbarrow, yeah, and you push me pushing the wheelbarrow. Yeah, no, no that's the same. That's, that's too silly. What else do you want um, to do at the garden centre, folks? You're, it's your first trip um, here, and you, you've basically got the run of the place, honestly. There's, there's no one here to stop you, and you've already murdered like 70 plus people from this village so at this point I feel like there's you'd have to do a lot of theft to catch up uh, rat poison don't you, you hate it when the party has to hear you have to do a whole lot of uh, theft to catch up with the murder you did uh, <laughs> look for any... anything we can eat sorry was that Creed look for anything we can eat I mean, depending on, like, the type of garden centre, chances are they have, like, some small vegetable plants. I don't know if they would be in season, though. It's December. They might have potatoes. Vegetables in season in December. Um, Oh, actually, there's quite a few vegetables in season in December, yeah. You can get carrots, beetroot, Brussels sprouts, butternut squash, cauliflower... 
cap, um, potatoes. I can't see on the list, but they, I mean, probably are they potatoes? They almost always are. Um, yeah, no, there's loads of stuff actually. In fact, cool. So, on the food front, yeah, um, and it's only been, I mean, however long it's been, it's at worst been a couple of weeks without tending. So the vegetable side of things, you're, you're able to source plenty of stuff. Um, rat poison, you also find a handy couple of bottles of pills. And I think that Strong's very... And I think that Strong's, that, I think that smells particularly strong. Um, paraffin, I guess. Yeah, oh, paraffin just in general might be useful, actually. Oh, hell yeah. Well, you get yeah, plenty of that. Yeah, get some paraffin. <laughs> and uh, like, sorry, you said shrubs. Like, I can't like not, but a shrubbery. It's a shrubbery. I suppose you could load up a shrubbery, but <laughs> it's going to be hell to push that back. Uh, maybe not a shrubbery <laughs> then. It's a silly idea. God damn it! <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, you, you've loaded one uh, one trolley up with vegetables and rat poison and trowels, or a trowel and like four shards. Um, and then a second trolley is halfway fill up with uh, bottles of paraffin. Anything else? Lighters or matches, I guess, for to, to light said paraffin with? Lighters you won't be able to find. Matches, I would think, matches. would actually be pretty, pretty reasonable. Got some matches... So for uh, yeah. of matches. Um, are there any barbed wire? Or, like, you know, uh, chicken grate or anything like that? Chicken grate you could find. Get a, a, add a roll of that to trolley number two. Uh, anyone who's not here, I guess, feel free to chuck in out of character requests whilst they're, whilst they're out looting. I presume I'm still sleeping at this point, you, right? You are. This is out of character. I have nothing really to add. Don't say it. Don't say it. Not saying anything, Ollie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say it. So, anything else you want at the garden centre, folks, before you head back? Oh, I got sledgehammers. They probably have a sledgehammer if you want to nab a sledgehammer. Sweet. Okay. Oh, actually, you picked me up an axe. An axe. A little hatchet for everyone. Hatchet. I hope you guys are making a list of this because I'm not. No. <laughs> uh, it's your inventory, so if you don't make a list of it, it'll just fall out along the wayside. Uh, I'm a three pickaxes later. That's a good point, actually. Pickaxes. Do we get any? Don't think they'd have pickaxes at a garden centre. Axes, no. hammers, hey, sledgehammers. What? I'm pretty sure there's pickaxes at my my parents' local uh, garden centre. They're not like big, they're, they're like kind of small pickaxes, but I feel like they're pick shaped objects anyway. Let's have a look. Pickaxe. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But, do they have any dog food? Maybe you can get that for the dog. Which I'm not sure, if, is dog food really a thing at this point? I wonder when dog food was invented. History of dog food. It's probably, it seems industrial, right? I would assume it's been going since the 19th century, right? Uh, first commercial dog uh, food was developed by in 1860. Oh, okay. Canned dog food, sorry, was 1922, which was mostly horse meat, apparently. Yeah. If not, no, they started off using excess horses left over from World War One, and then by the 1930s, they began breeding horses for the purposes of making dog food. <laughs> Grizzly. What did dogs eat before there was dog food? Nothing. They starved to death in three months. Uh, that seems to be the origin behind the first guy making it, honestly, looking at it. Pet food so, Rat poison, shovels, trowel, chicken wire, paraffin, matches, hatches, sledgehammer, dog food? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you turn up dry on the pickaxes, uh, I'm afraid, but dog food you manage. Oh, okay. No sledgehammers. <laughs> Uh, no, there, there were there was a sledgehammer. You can get a sledgehammer. Oh, there was a sledgehammer. It was, yeah, not it, it was okay. a pickaxe. I I drew the line at. Okay. Oh, but you said hatchet. Yes, though. Yeah, hatchet. Yes. Yeah. They definitely have hatches. If nothing else, they're very near a forest. I can't think what the use for pickaxes would be in this era, in this part of the world. 
Yeah, it's good for, well, I'd say you'd probably more use a hoe for it, but, like, uh, good for breaking up tough ground. Uh, when, like, oh, uh, rope. With... Sorry. Oh, rope's a good one. Yeah. Of rope, rope. You say? We, we always need rope. <laughs> yeah, and a ten-foot pole. God damn it. Sh- well, <laughs> I knew it was fucking coming. But there's any... <laughs> sure. You find rope and a section marked ten-foot poles. <laughs> Next to it is the what would that be? What, what's a good garden center D and D reference? Uh, um, digging and lightning shrubbery. Dig, digging and, 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 and awakened shrubbery. That's it. An awakened shrubbery. You can't have an awakened shrubbery. I mean, you can in this context, but that would be terrifying. <laughs> that's basically an ant. <laughs> it's just a tiny little baby ant. Can we get a baby ant? You cannot get a baby ant. Ah. Is no stroke. Oh, what, what was that? Carl? Oh, and ENT is no throat. God damn it. Cool, and with that, I think you've probably about filled up two trolleys. Oh, I think so. Oh, did we get... Um, oh, it just says lots of veggies, right? Oh, veggies. Yeah, there, there, there were a lot of vegetables, and a lot of those were quite portable as well. Like, you know, you can fit an absolute shit ton of kale into one trolley. And then you've tamped it down with two nice, fresh bottles of rat poison. So, <laughs> the uh, finished list is rat poison, four shovels, one trowel, chicken wire, paraffin, matches, a hatchet, a sledgehammer, dog food, 50 feet of hempen rope, 10 foot pole, and veggies. Oh, can we get a chisel as well? And a chisel. Yeah, you can find a chisel on your way out and just wick it into the cart. How many spades is that? Or shovels, rather? Four cool. shovels, one trowel, because I can't use a shovel. Hey, to be fair, you can. It's just I more mean, difficult without being able to put both uh, both um, hands on it. Yeah, that's why I've got a trowel instead. Yeah. I mean, you still so, got your foot, right? Yeah, but it's still difficult. Yeah. Like, the motions don't come so well. It's it's much more proportionally exhausting. Yeah. Um, if he was, like suitably experienced with it, probably, and I imagine he's done an amount of digging in his time, but also he was a captain, so I feel like it's probably not the work he would have been at. Oh, hell no, I'd be, uh, quote-unquote, supervising. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you mean, quote-unquote? I was! I really love that you're super into your character as as uh, Captain McInCharge guy, and you have, like, one dot of leadership. <laughs> Didn't say he was a good one. His entire squad's dead for a reason. Sorry, squad. Your entire battalion. Your battalion, battalion is dead. <laughs> uh, not battalion. Brigade. It's a pal's brigade, right? Yeah. So it's your brigade. Your brigade is dead. Horrifying. <laughs> oh no, it is battalion. My bad. Fuck. Still a lot. Here's 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 a picture of some of one pal's battalion. Well, battalion's a thousand, roughly. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just having a look. Pals, bri- pals battalion's size. Uh, uh, right, is, is it only a brigade that's bigger? Right, is that right? I'm not actually sure how, how big they are. I remember reading it on Wikipedia ages ago, what the different sizes were, but... Uh, a lot of these things vary massively with time. Mm, You're only going off the posture. I can totally see Pope Jack just being that officer figure off to the left, who's looking down the line. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> the first usage of the battalion in English was in the 1580s, and was used to mean part of a regiment from 1708. A battalion at full war establishment was cons- uh, was compromised of 1,107 officers and men. That's roughly what I thought. Um, how the fuck did you manage to get 1,199 people killed? Or 1,099 people killed? I didn't hear if it was 1,106. Even the lieutenant colonel died, but Captain Popajack lived through. I'm starting to think more and more that you just killed them all, or you were a coward. How dare you! Take that, that back! 
that means I'm right then. You, you know when say, a gentleman says, how dare you, you know you you're right. You can say many things about the frontline British officers in the First World War, but for the class who were officially in charge of first over the trench line, then walk at the enemy, coward is usually not on the list. No, fair enough. But I'm, well, I'm calling Popa Jack a coward if he's the one who, you know, survived out of the other 1,105 people there. It's how fair. dare you, sir? That so means I'm day right. does not. It takes you perhaps an hour to wheel the carts all the way back, more or less just by yourself. If I have... <laughs> how? How are you getting these? But you have to do it in two trips. You've got to. You've got one arm, and the wheelchair is not powered. I do a falcon. Uh... I vote. We drive the car down to here, by the way, and then we just do a straight line across. Uh, so, like, drive the car down to here. I was thinking Thorn- Thornbury, just one arms, uh, trolley each, and then that's, uh, Pope Jack pushes him. Yes, that could work. We attach the trolleys to the wheelchair, and I shall push the wheelchair. I don't really follow it, but um, fuck it. Strength Athletics, diff 7. From, I guess, you. <laughs> Do you get a plus one difficulty on physical rolls for your lack of an arm, or...? Uh, when it involves two... Uh, when it requires two hands. I guess it doesn't require two hands to push, actually. I mean, it's like, I don't know if I can assist... Like, because I've still got my own propulsion system yeah, well, for we'll the you, chair. We'll give you a plus one pool mod for being assisted. Ah. Well, reluctantly three successes, unless you've got a specialty. Uh, I do not have a specialty. No. Thank Christ for that. Three successes. You make a fair old go of pulling two, uh, pushing two with uh, Sebastian's assistance, pushing two fully loaded carts. All the oh. way back to the Tutley Inn. So, I no, I had a thought about what I could have asked for, which was ingredients to make explosives, because I likely have the requisite knowledge. I don't think any of them are, are um, <sighs> educated in chemistry enough for that. You could probably make a decent go of it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'd have to go there, I suppose, at some point. Yeah. But that would be not gaming. Well, you know, there's a garden centre. But, oh, well, then it'd be a bit of game, and I may go and make some explosives later. Then, um, so the two, uh, uh, the other two of you arrive back, and at this point, both of you are all but on the the verge of keeling over. Inside, Beginald is still face down on uh, in uh, face down, slumped over a table, badly in a chair. Upstairs, you can hear the sounds of Polb and Twight snoring. And Woodrow, Lift. Tango, and the dog are both slumbering fitfully on the floor, tossing and turning. What do you two? Uh, well, spades. Um, uh, Actually, you've been doing a lot of physical exercise. I will take. I will take a stamina athletics check. Difficulty nine to not just pass out. Oh, I should have got coffee. Tea. More tea. <laughs> mm, okay. Is coffee very very big in the UK right now? Is it something that's... <coughs> I don't think so. I think it's mostly loose-leaf tea at this point. Oh, no, we would have tea bags. There would definitely be tea bags. They were invented like the 1850s or something. Uh, I think so. Pretty sure. History. Tea bag patents date from 1903. Uh, 1903. Uh, uh, the now common rectangular tea bag was not invented until 1944. Um, and they were popularized in America first as well, as I recall, uh, and didn't make headway in the UK until surprisingly late. Yeah, I remember them being an accident. They were a guy, yeah, yeah, a guy from New York shipped them in silk bags around the world. Um, popular legend states it was accidental the loose tea was intended to be removed it wasn't they found it easy to brew the tea with the leaves still enclosed in the bags he then realised that this was a thing and created actual proper pores in the bags so um, are you rolling as well Carl or are you just falling unconscious by the way because you're still muted and you haven't rolled 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm just falling unconscious. Uh, okay, yeah. So the just second he's got inside, um, Sebastian Thornbury just passes out. Pope Jack, you're with your one success just about holding on there. Everyone else is passed out asleep around you. What are we doing? Shut the doors. Lazy bastards. I, I make sure I get all the shopping in, on the inside. I, I refill my ammunition. Mm. I then make sure that every, I bring in some ammunition for everyone else as well. And then I'll close the doors. This would never have happened in His Majesty's army. Ah, <sighs> this is pathetic. Look at this. Dogs on the floor. That's not an approved regimental mascot. <laughs> yes, I make sure everyone's got some ammo, some extra ammo. As we ran low. Uh, um, bring all the shopping inside. Yeah. You've created the ammo fairy now. <laughs> <laughs> Brings um, bullets I'd like to, to... boys and girls whilst they sleep. <laughs> That's a terrifying thought. That's, uh... Now, Nick's had a thought, and this isn't why I bought it. If I if I just force-feed the dogs some of the rat poison... Whoa. It might be a werewolf. I don't trust it. You can try and force-feed the dogs some of the rat poison if you like. Yeah, I mean, like, for all of the stuff that we normally do, I think we will be crossing a line here. Yeah? Okay. okay. We just bought dog food as well. You can't just immediately we call did. it. <laughs> I, I'm going to use the dog food. I'm going to put the rat poison in the dog food. That's not force feeding it. Fair enough. Um, That's tricking it if it works and doesn't smell the rat poison, which 1919 era rat poison probably gives off a bit of a stank. Fair enough. Um, that said, I'm not going to uh, stop you murdering the wolfhound if you want to, young Nicholas. No, I'm not going to murder him. Um, I'm going to try to wake up uh, Beginald. No, you you shake him up as best you can, but he's he's just unconscious. I like to fire a f- fire round into the ceiling, making sure I don't hit anyone's bedroom. In this enclosed room, that will deafen you at the very least, and also everyone else, whether or not they wake up. Probably but, shit up to the dog as well. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to wake everyone up, whether it deafens me or not. All right, just just to double check, because at this point you've been up for over 24 hours. Yep. Uh, what is your goal here with waking everyone up again? Get back to the White Mountain. Okay... <laughs> He'll still be there after a sleep. Yeah, but we're not getting any benefits from the sleep, so I must just stay up. You're, you're not getting any willpower from the sleep. Um, it is still doing something to stop you from just, like, passing out involuntarily. Ah, I see. It, ah, okay. It's getting less and less useful for that, as you can see from the villagers. But, um, you know, you... you uh, did just pass a diff nine roll, not to just pass out spontaneously after physical exercise, which might be a disadvantage in a dig. Fair enough. Uh, which case, uh, I'm going to um, uh, get myself nice and cozy uh, on in a, in a seat or something. Um, make sure, uh, uh, yeah, and just, yeah, just just sit down in a sofa and just. Go to sleep after I've I've made sure to lock all of the doors. Um, uh, you changed your fucking profile picture to the guy from the pals Br- uh, pals battalion. <laughs> <laughs> I may have. God damn it! <laughs> terrible, terrible person, and we love you for it, Nick. <laughs> oh dear. So you. Crook your shotgun under your arm. Broken, of course. Pistol, I don't have a shotgun. Oh, pistol, sorry, yeah. Less broken in that case. Um, yes. Close and bolt each door. You don't have a key, but the dead bolts will do, you assume. I'd better bar them if I can as well, like with furniture. Just like one piece or something. You do not have the energy for that. Uh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, you, you're dead on your feet. Okay, okay. And... Uh, and then promptly pass out in the most comfortable looking chair you can find. Gun still held. Safety on, but ready to be flicked off at hopefully a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. And you drift off into a dreamless daytime slumber. 
I think the first person to awake is probably going to be Holman twice upstairs as the first person who collapsed. Holman fantasizes for a brief moment about strangling all of the rich toffs that are currently completely defenseless. No one realizes that wouldn't be very good for the said greater good. It's a little fancy, tiny, tiny fancy. You can see through your window that it's dark outside already. Do I hear any howling? No howling. But perhaps the occasional tromp of feet on cobbled stones. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look out through the windows uh, and maybe through the doorways. You know, actually, no, just the windows, I think. You just to out, see if. Yeah, you look out through your bedroom window. I see people moving, I'm guessing. There's one person moving sluggishly across a nearby street and then over to your uh, moving towards your side of it, looking like they're heading for an alley, which will in turn lead them up towards White Mountain. Well, I take out my rifle, aim it on the windowsill, and nah. um, I go downstairs and I presume seeing the wheelbarrows full of garden equipment um, wake the rest of the gang. And they're I explain. Groggy, but one by one, you're able to cause them to arise. And I tell them that it's happening again. I'm seeing Townsfolk heading towards presumably White Mountain. All of you feel utterly awful. None of you feel particularly well rested, though better than you were when you slept uh, the previous night. Well, not the previous night, the night before last, actually, now I come to mention it. You were up the previous night. Um, uh, no willpower. Make regained. us some tea. Sorry. Uh, sorry, yeah, no willpower regained. Beginald nods, of course, uh, and sort of staggers and sways off towards the kitchen. I put a hand to Beginald's chest. Are you sure you don't want to let them make it themselves? They know what they like. Why not let them make it themselves, dear Beginald? Beginald eye, uh, Beginald's eyes fill up with a distinct and murderous rage. That would not be decorous. Beginald, you are a relic of an older time, aren't you, my dear boy? And I pat him on the chest and let him go on his way. And I ask for a cup of tea as well. Get it yourself, commoner. And with that, his, his sway seems to have taken some purpose, you know. This this incipient class struggle has given him some reason to awake, some meaning to his life. Well, I'm still the one in the bed, so I feel like it's, uh, I'm the one winning it. It's true. In fact, no one slept in beds last night, even the people yeah, who yeah. had beds. As far as I'm concerned, my wheelchair is now my bed. It's my whole world. You know what? You deserve it. Your pencils I... are going to be real in a couple of days. <laughs> hey, I, I got turned last night, or like however you want to phrase it. Like, um, fell out, got rolled around and put back. Uh, that counts. It's true. <laughs> uh, Everyone else, I... what are we doing? The The dog seems still here, but groggy. I'll it fix the dog some of that dog food if I find it. See if I can eat some breakfast. I second, I thought you were going to say dog food as well. <laughs> it seems not particularly happy about it, but it does munch down on the dog food, stopping occasionally to retch gently. <laughs> oh, poor dog. Well, we gentlemen. I, it seems that I must address what we're probably all thinking. How wise is it to return to the mountain after nightfall? We must eat the dog. Oh, sorry. Like, eyes wide, looked askance towards... Um, Holden. Holden, that's it. Uh, I, yes. Um, well, do we have torches? Or any such any other form of lighting equipment? If we do, then... You know, perhaps it's not too bad of an idea, but I do agree with you. Perhaps we should stay uh, away from White Mountain until at least the morning. I think you well, were able to source lanterns rather than torches. Um, that's I have a, some sort of thing. Yeah, you have a torch of some kind, of, um, because you have fancy ultra-modern tech. Um, oh, I but, thought we were going torches as in, like, old-fashioned stuff. Oh, well, those aren't that difficult to make, honestly. You only need, like, a dot of survival, probably. Yeah. 
Um, well, I have a doppel in survival. There you go. Pope Jack has burned many a commoner's uniform in his time. <laughs> These must Hold them, come here, we need your clothes. Oh, sorry, not her. That's what you do. Um, yes, that said, uh, any kind of reasonable light source in the bowl of White Mountain would very likely be visible at surprisingly distant ranges. Oh, hell yeah. Um, Which is kind of why I was saying, don't want to go back at night, not that we need a light source. Group staring at each other tensely, um, tersely. What is back, the time? We're gonna Sorry. have to. The clocks have not been wound in some days, and all of you are quite tired at this point. Um, it's also December, since it's after dark. Uh, it could be anywhere between five o'clock and ten. Can I uh, try to? Tell a rough time, as in uh, midnight, or it's just gone dusk, and so forth. Uh, using... You still have moon travel, right? Or is it too cloudy? Yeah, the moon doesn't travel across the sky like that, does it? Yeah, no, the moon doesn't set all. No, no you can't use moon, but you can use stars depending yeah, on time does... of year and so forth. I mean, the stars do as well. Yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, no, the moon does travel. The yeah, moon travels, yeah. It doesn't move in such a predictable manner as the sun, though, does it? Um, all right, well, let's... I mean, no, it's not as predictable. Let's check. Does anyone have any kind of skill that would be related to um, astronomy? Uh, survival? Uh, uh, I navigate the other world by a couple of stars. <laughs> uh, streetwise? <laughs> Academics? I could maybe see survival or academics. Uh, investigation? <laughs> Bit of a stretch. <laughs> Can I intimidate the stars? I would like to intimidate time itself to rewind. As long as I get a d20, I'll be all good. <laughs> this is not a mage game. Fun fact, D20 crit successes don't actually appear in the rulebook anywhere. That is entirely homebrew. Yeah. People just accept. Right. Yeah. These people not reading the rulebooks before running the game. I, for one, am disgusted by their laziness. I just what can't this? understand how that they can have any fun if they don't go through every single rule first. Bastards. On, on, on the Tuesday, I was telling people that we didn't read the rulebook for Dark Heresy for two years. The looks I got were... That's the word I'm looking for. Askance? Is that the word? Askance. Yeah, yeah. Askance, indeed, is to put it politely. Yeah, I mean, in, I say in my defence, it's not that like I didn't read it so much so I chose not to bring up a load of stuff when it happened, and then... <laughs> well, if anything makes it worse, you knew? <laughs> I mean, I'd read my rules. Yeah, no, I still remember I you, like... I read half me, my rules. Coming to me really, like... Slightly disbelieving and pointing out that we'd been doing combat wrong the whole time, Creed. I remember finding out. Into oh, rain. I can't remember who it was, but they asked me, please don't mention that to you. And, and then the situation came up like the next session where it kind of, I couldn't in good faith now knowing it. <laughs> oh, good times. Combat got a lot less killy, but a lot more fun after we started using the actual rules rather than just like. Especially, I miss not having 16 attacks a turn. Fucking hell. <laughs> I miss not having Wonder Dog. So, <laughs> where were we at? Uh, navigating the sky using survival, yeah. hopefully. Uh, sure. Survival, not time. survival, perception, diff. How many dots in survival you got? One. Got two. Oh. I'm gonna, you a, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give you a diff nine. Alright. Um, that both of us diff nine, is it? One of you gets the roll. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm at five. Uh, I'm at I think three. Okay, go ahead. Can I assist? I don't think so. I think eyesight it's in a bit of a weird situation, right? You're both bleary and, and exhausted. More the kind of conf confirming, yes, that's that constellation there, that's that constellation there. Yeah, I, I tentatively think it's not going to be cumulative in a, a great way here, I'm afraid. What do you mean it's nine in the morning? How could I just don't understand, but the stars are... 
Wouldn't you shit yourself? No. Yeah, it, it could be anything. It's it's you're not even clear like how difficult it is to actually tell uh, what time of night it is in this fashion. It's just you you can barely make out some of these pinpricks uh, pinpricks of light. Your eyes are so bleary, and your head is pounding. Oh, Reginald, I need that tea. I can't function without my tea. You know this. Reginald appears shakily at your side, carrying a small steel teapot. Tin teapot, I guess, rather. Begins pouring a thin, watery tea out of it. Oh, Running rather low, I'm afraid, sir, and the milk has curdled. Well then, clearly we'll use lemon, then. They have no lemons, sir. <laughs> well, well, I shall go back and search the kitchen once more. Would Sir care for his tea in the meanwhile? Um, I look at it, eyebrow raised. If indeed you could call this tea, Beginald wilts. No, sir, I suppose not. I'll take it inside and endeavour to do better. We're not angry, we're just disappointed. Strides off dejectedly back to the kitchen. I kind of feel sorry, but, like, I mean, I wouldn't do it if it was Betty's character. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, in regards to White Mountain, if we go back tonight, I have a feeling we'll have to fight off another wave of semi-conscious villagers hell-bent on sacrificing themselves. Semi. Um, we could either try to stop them, we could observe them this time, or we could take the night to look around town and see what it's like in the eve, or we could sleep some more and go back to White Mountain and dig in the morning. Yes. Those were several options. It wasn't a yes or no. Inclusive, yes. yeah. No, yeah, How I think know? he's onto something there. Yes, I also agree. You have all been spending too long with the commoner. My word. <laughs> You're all, all right. losing brain cells. I'm spending so much time with you, Toph. Um, yeah, out of character, this is lack of sleep and proper tea talking. It's just what communism is, basically, at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> I find any dice. <laughs> You can you can scrounge up a pair of dice. Okay, okay. Oh, what 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 what? I need, I need one dice. You one and a two. We go back and we do what we did last night. Three and a four. We observe. Five and a six. We sleep and we go back in the morning. <laughs> and I roll the dice. A character. This is that meme which is I rest, I sleep, <laughs> based on a dice roll. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Upon real. Like, upon realising what's happening, um, slow, slow facepalm. Looks like we're rinse and repeating, boys. What? Well, back to the mountain to kill. Yeah, I say we go in the morning. Now you can make a decision, my word. <laughs> One for the morning. Anyone else want to make a decision? At least first, like... Yeah, I was, uh, was do morning. We'll go out very early. Okay. I suggest we take watch, though. Who knows when that werewolf may come a prowling? We haven't actually seen any werewolves yet in the uh, in the town, have we? They stopped nope. at the boundary of the bridge, and well, I mean, that was a separate matter. I- I'm going to posit that we are actually maybe safe in this this town. Our character, uh, it ran away because I hurt it bad. No, oh, I thought it ran. I thought it stopped at the bridge edge and just wouldn't cross. Last night, yeah, yeah, yeah. The time before that, it ran away because we fireballed it in the face. <laughs> Don't think so. You, um, everything you threw at it just kind of rolled off it. Oh my well, god! You shot it, shot it point blank in the shoulder with the elephant gun. In fact, the uh, one of you who did use a thing, um, my curse rolled yeah, off it, yeah, but then there was a here. flash, and the fireball did hit it. <coughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, 
Well, I mean, like, like we didn't get confirmation of damage. Maybe, again, it was just coincidence that it ran off at that point. But two levels of ag damage, like... So it's, yeah. uh, it's possible either way. Yeah. Could spend a little bit of tonight maybe looking out of the forest and seeing how it behaves, maybe? Personally, I would prefer not to encounter such things in a situation where I'm quite literally unable to run away, gentlemen. <laughs> you could just roll away. It'll be fine. As with last night, it proved I require a head start. That's fine. It's fine. Spoken with the confidence of a man who has just recently proved he can outrun his colleagues. Given the chance. <laughs> uh, like you said, it's perfectly safe in town, probably. So, the three of you are going to allow the villagers to stride out towards the mountain. I mean, personally, I'd like to go hunt them down and pop them off before they can get there, but, like, as if I can do that. The best game to hunt is human, you see. Indeed, I believe it was... Oh, let my, my memory recalls correctly. Or if this page would load so I could like, actually get the name of whoever said it. Oh my god, this is super helpful, thank you. Ah. I believe it was Ernest Hemingway. Oh wait, what year was he? Shit. I also may not work. And Hemingway is only 20 years old at this point. Yeah, he probably hasn't written it. He Never probably mind. hasn't hunted many homeless people yet. Well, um, but yeah, the quote I was going with is, There is no hunting like the hunting of man, and though has heard that those who have hunted armed men long enough and liked it never care for anything else thereafter. Honestly, it does make it sound like Ernest Hemingway has killed a fair number of people in his lifetime. Yeah, right. He falls in the wall. I, I stand by what I said. <laughs> I mean, I you still do it. They still dig up the munitions in Belgium, you know. Yeah, just with Ernest Hemingway and skull printed oh, on it. Oh, God. Did you... <laughs> did I, I mean, I don't know if it would have popped up for you in Sweden, but did you hear about the guy that went to A&E with an old World yes. War II? Yes, uh, yes. That was fucking hilarious. They called the bomb squad and everything. Yeah, it's the bomb squad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I did hear about this. I didn't look into the details because I couldn't believe it actually happened, but apparently it did. Okay. So, yeah. So. In that case, then, just to round off the session, we've only got six minutes left, and it feels like we've reached a natural stopping point. As the four of you file back into the room, you can see that there's something missing. The wolfhound, the wolfhound has slunk out the door after you opened it. Disappeared into the night. He was the open the door. Wonder dog. And that feels like a good place to end it for the week. Wonder dog. I swear, if your pet dog, I I swear, if that dog kills us, I'll never, I'll never let another dog survive the night. I'll, I'm gonna haunt you so bad if that dog kills us. I surely. The next time I have the chance to kill a dog while it sleeps, I'll take it. God. Feasibly, with the amount of ghosts probably tethered to Popa Jack, if he dies and gets a wraith, he's not making it more than 20 meters before someone starts dragging him off to the forges to be made into, I can only assume, some kind of comical novelty dildo. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like Popa Jack is the sort of person who should, at the very least, get turned into socks, running socks. Wow. Oh, the kind that just goes from gym bag to feet to gym bag. Yeah, um, yeah. So that, would be, that would be moliate. Yeah, you don't soul forge for that. That would be moliate. It's like vicissitude, but for ghosts. Um, you're, I think, generally conscious when you've been moliated. So soul forging is generally held to kill you, question mark, again. Um, moliate, the socks would be sapient. Oh, that's even better, because I feel like they probably would do that to Popa Jack. You know, all roughly, I'm guessing, 1,000... Bite your feet. 1,105 
you're sapient, but you have all of the immense motional, uh, like motion power of a sock. Unfortunately, unless someone sculpts, I teeth will in. give you a rash. Unless someone sculpts teeth into it, it's already like I, I have no mouth and I must scream. Situation. I will yeah. give them a rash then. I mean, I'm... technically, the opening of a sock is called the mouth of the sock. It's true. So I have no. I, I it's reminders mm. for next session. Anyone got anything they want noted down? We fucked. <laughs> you want to be more specific? Uh, <laughs> sleepless, can't eat. Um, really yeah, I, I, I thought you meant like some of that and just happens. Yeah, on the, well, on the rising tension front, I think you're, you're going to need to solve something sooner rather than later because you're reaching the point of being irreparably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the, part, the part of sexual no return. What? Yes. Well, you Wait, may have the point of no return. There's the sexual tension point of no return as well. I, I feel like anyone was going there with that. Any other oh, moments? Uh, I'm just know, Carl's about. Like... Sorry? I don't know Carl's about. <laughs> God damn it. Any other uh, moments? <laughs> dog's gone. We bought, well, we've got a list yeah, of the moments in the, in the Discord. Yeah, I've got that in my moots as well. I've got my notes as well, yeah. Anything else? Not. Uh, night time now. Till later. Which means sleepy time now. <laughs> fair, fair. Anything else? I'm taking first watch. Or oh, Seb is taking first watch. Nah. Hope fair, Jack fair. wants to. Uh, I say, um, more, uh, want to talk. observe werewolves tonight. Fair, fair. Anything else? Um, um, is it Hazim? Who, who was your character, Creed, from... Zanzarim. Zanz Zanzarim and Catcob live on. Zanzarim's are here. <laughs> Zanzarim are here. Yeah, I had to go check it, because uh, that was one of my highlights. Uh, <laughs> I think you just had a sleep induced, a sleep deprivation induced hallucination, honestly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, any other any other reminders? Everyone needs reprimanding for sleeping on the job, apart from Piper Jack. Of course you would say that. I'm no, for I'm, hours I'm, after the rest of you passed out. I'm sensing favouritism. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but... He did do, like, a load of, of fucking ammo fairy reshuffling <laughs> whilst yeah. you were all, like, collapsed unconscious. Now he knows what it feels like at the end. I got the shopping in, I reloaded your weapons, I closed and locked all the doors. Clearly I'm having an influence on you, Nick. It sounds like you're slowly, surely becoming a member of the working class. Any other no, moves? I just know when things need to get done, I need to do them myself. Any other Especially when the rest of you are sleeping. Session. The working class are useless. Okay. We should have done that to whoever, to whoever Nick interviews for next. Just click that. Yeah, just, just add that Please on. Please don't! <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, we'll just send them to a time stamped copy of this video. Feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time. Uh, Pops uh, being toffs. It felt like, uh, what was it, uh, Momentum was up the first two-thirds of the session, but wasn't quite so fast the second, the last third, rather. But yeah. that's fine. Because we, we had a really, like, weirdly fast pace for the first third, two-thirds. I, I kept looking down at the clock and going, okay, we must be about, oh, 20 minutes in, this isn't the halfway point. Right, yeah. yeah. <coughs> it did die off towards the end, but to be fair, everyone was role-playing as sleep-deprived posh people. Um, Apart from me, who was a sleep-deprived... Useless working class, according to Nick. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Correct. Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Yep. <laughs> well, I for one look forward to seeing whether you TPK from sleep uh, due to sleepless magic, or if you can solve this shenanigan. Now we can't TPK because uh, Popa Jack has plot armor. Popa Jack doesn't necessarily have plot armor. The current Popa Jack does. Maybe Popa Jack's such an important political figure that after his death. 
someone is inserted <laughs> into that role. I see. Would explain why he changed magical disciplines. Mm. Did you just get fantasy rulered? <laughs> oh no. Oh no! <laughs> Nick, congratulations, you've become so popular, you can't ever die. But in reality, you can, you just don't, by name only. This is what we call the Avril Levine. Uh, <laughs> any, other, any other feedback? I get that reference. Oh, but that must live. Oh, he doesn't <laughs> have to, though. <laughs> feedback denied. He will get I'm... in the car and drive away. Like, it but makes you can't... Me... I have a dot and drive, I can! No, I have no, no it's impossible to leave. Yeah, supernaturally compelled to stay within the area. And the only guy you know of who got into the area and then out again was the, like, dream infiltrator wizard who died a horrible, grisly death. Oh, I didn't realize we were compelled to stay. Yeah, it was in the intro session. Yeah. Fuck! The only way out, as they say, is through. Any other thing? Okay. The only way through is without. That's not how that saying goes. No, I have no idea what the saying is. I just think it's a more random connecting words. Cool. Questions? Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session? Is everyone uh, I'm narrati- narratively unsure of the speed of the wheelchair as it went down the yeah, mountain. Yeah, honestly, I think if we work out the speed of the wheelchair, we'll realise it was easily going over 30 miles an hour across rough moorland terrain, and that will remove uh-huh. all conceivable sense of danger. I'm not letting Carl do that. That trek took so fucking long on foot, and then Carl blitzed it in like an hour, hour and a half of furious wheelchair riding. Um, yeah. Come- uh- we were just I say, yeah, right. Um, it, it was fear adrenaline. Yeah. It, it is a slightly different situation. Yeah, exactly. um, I really mind. Well, you know, like you never seen like a mother lift a car off a child. Yeah, true, 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 it's true. You see you ripping your wheels off your wheelchair and being like, "I have made a terrible mistake right now." <laughs> <laughs> I was a little too angry. Can someone please help me? <laughs> Any other questions? I shall keep my insides my insides with sheer force of will and anger. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um. I was just going to ask uh, when we were doing the blood investigations. Like, um, when that was done, was it like, uh, what's the term? Like, you know, when you all draw lines and they cross over. Like, did it all look like the blood was going the same way, or was it? Like uh, haphazard. Um, it was all draining down towards the uh, the centre of the um, caldera at the top of White Mountain. So it was vaguely going in a, the the same direction, I suppose, to the the nadir of the mountain top. Because yeah, I say it's like because uh, what's call it? You know, there's like a difference between how liquid naturally goes down like a dirt trail versus how something's like to it, right? Yeah, if you weren't looking for something specific, you'd almost say it looked natural. Almost. Okay. Almost. Uh, any of the narrative questions? No? Oh, cool. In that case, let's do some exploit. Exploit! Plot progression. Does anyone feel like made any significant plot progression this session? Yes. I agree. Yep. Right. No XP for plot progression. Character development. No, Does anyone feel like you made any significant character development this session? Um, I say with actual plot progression, though. Um, oh no, no, we're done with that section now. <laughs> Everyone gets one answer. No, all right, fine, we'll go back. Um, you know what really? The, like young Nicholas didn't say it. The rest of you are letting the team down. <laughs> that indubitably. Um, no. Yeah, sorry. Plot progression. Um, I say we confirmed uh, rumors on Cat Clock Mountain of there being a large cat. Okay, small cat was kind of extra. Um, the the point more being was like uh, there is something else going on that has been confirmed. Mm, tenuous, but I'll give it to you. Anything else, guys? Anything? That's all I got. Uh, we Being... got one surprise. That that's plot, and we made friends with a dog. Yeah, made friends with a dog. Yeah, you yep. considered poisoning it. I the majority didn't. of the group made friends with the dog. 
That's actually a pretty fair distinction. <laughs> really, you just harassed it. And it then, was a para- passing thought, okay? It's like, do I have to kill this yeah, thing? You harassed Could it, it before kill that. I checked its paws for blood! It was clearly uncomfortable, but too weak to resist. It took a few moments to do... I don't know why I'm giving plot XP for the fucking dog, but um, character development. Does anyone feel that you develop your character this session? Um, so how? Hopper Jack threw his disdain for the lower classes, and it just proved that they are fucking useless. I feel like, like I discovered exactly how all of Hopper Jack's uh, battalion, other than himself, died. Uh, through sheer incompetency and cowardice. Yes, yeah, they're all cowards. They're all incompetent. I completely agree. No, 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 no. You misunderstand. You're the incompetent. Any other character development? No, no, no. You're misunderstanding. Because you're incompetent, you think that. Any but you other are correct. character development? <laughs> um, I effectively got to a point where the rogue de- uh, demeanor. No, what's the other one? Yeah, yeah, it's demeanor. Um, like was. Like strong enough to uh, get a point of willpower. That's fair. Because yeah, my self-interest has usually been more subtle, um, but this was straight up noping out. Nope. Yeeting yourself down the mountain. No, she be yeeting down the mountain when she comes. When she comes. <laughs> was, oh god. <laughs> she be yeeting down the mountain when she comes. When she comes. Fucking primary school memories. <laughs> we uh, should start an acapella band. We really shouldn't. In the interest of the drummer, you hear young Nicholas. Um, <laughs> excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well this session? No, I, like, I think the other three... Oh, sorry. I was going to say I like Carl's uh, Fuck This Shit I'm Out song, but in the form of wheelchair interpretive dance. <laughs> okay, so that's... I don't know quite how to summarise that one. No fucking um, Aubrey knows that. Um, any of the excellence of roleplay? Um, I think the other three shared a very good moment in that, like, we all know the doorway rule, like, uh, but in character, it's never been explained in any way. Um, so, of course, it's like, yeah, let's make a doorway out of twigs and stuff, and then it'll be fine, right? I, I did like that. Oh, you could dig into a hill, but it'd take you a while. I don't know why my version of, of Woodrow Tango is played by, like, knockoff Bane, but... Uh, <laughs> 40 years older. I was thinking of an old Sean Connery. I was wondering what would break first. Your doorway or your twigs? Your doorway or your mountain? <laughs> uh, I, I quite <laughs> like Ollie's... Uh, uh, Ollie's... Fuck this, I'm running, you guys can stay here, attitude. You guys can stay here and piss. <laughs> yeah. The gang faces the polar bear dilemma was a beautiful moment from everyone involved. <laughs> cool, so I make that out to be... Uh, that is... <sighs> Sorry, um, 10 points of roleplay for session number 35. That's three points of plot progression that uh, Cacklob Mountain contains cats, obtain the gardening supplies, and the majority of the party made friends with the dog. Three points of character development. That's Popajack continues to validate his worldview. Holborn continues to validate his worldview. Sebastian got willpower for, uh, and Sebastian got willpower for roleplaying his demeanor. Three points, excellence of roleplay. That's Thornbury nopes out, the doorway moment, and the gang faces the polar bear dilemma. Plus one standard. Which brings us on to everyone's favorite part of the session. It's the highlights. Oi, Lutz. I'm trying out something new. I don't know if it worked. Let's see. Uh, Carl, do you have any highlights for that session? I do. Could you come back round to me at the end, please? That's fair. Uh, yeah, Nicholas, do you have any highlights for that session? Mm-hmm. Um, Nicholas. Uh, I do. Brain is not working, though. Um, That's never stopped you contributing to the conversation before. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sorry, just watching Ollie die on webcam. 
Oh. <laughs> it's funny, because it's, you know, true. Oh. <laughs> Ollie, you can fuck right <laughs> up. Yeah, Ollie. You're so mean. No, no. Fuck you. You spent one measly week with, <laughs> with the bastards, and all of a sudden, and all of a sudden... <laughs> But You're ganging up on me. Just a, a little, you little shit. A little teeny tiny piece of bant. Just a singular bant to tide you <laughs> over till Christmas, young Nicholas. <laughs> we shared one bant unit and. <laughs> yeah. Um, to kill the dog or not kill the dog? That is the question. <laughs> so long. But there are no commas. Yes, there is. There's... Oh. <laughs> oh God. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, I've got it. Kill the dog or not kill the dog. Yeah. Because it's it's a quote, right? It's a quote, and the quote that you are quoting is literally two lines. Now, now, if you say it fast enough, it doesn't need a comma. That's not how <laughs> punctuation works. Any other highlights, <laughs> Nicholas? Um. Oh, uh, um. Sleeping on the job. <laughs> well, I think it's been. Yeah, he doesn't have a job. <laughs> any any other highlights? <laughs> the most work you've ever had to do is taking the lid off uh, of the uh, uh, I knew I couldn't trust the lower classes. Fair, fair. Any other highlights? Um, I think that's it. Oh, um... What do you mean the wheelbarrow conversion can't be a wheelbarrow anymore? Paraphrased, but fair. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, uh, like no. Um, finally, a four-way yep. A four-way what? A four a four-way yep. Well, four-way four-way yes. I don't remember the reference, uh, the context on that one. <laughs> Any plot progression? Yep, 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 yep. No, nope. V2, I'm not putting it in the fucking <laughs> highlights. <laughs> Next time it happens, I'm just sodding, skipping. Um, the funny thing is, I think we maxed out XP as well this session. <laughs> Any, you did. Uh, short of bonus XP, but that doesn't really count. Uh, <sighs> sorry. It's been it's been a week. Um, cool, Cree. Do you have any highlights of that session? Uh, no bladder, no arm. <laughs> oh god, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I can I can usually rely on young Nicholas to give some good good episode title quotes throughout. Most things. <laughs> no bladder, no arm. The little known Bob Marley song, which is a direct prequel to no, no Damn arm. it, Ollie. Uh, any other highlights, Creed? Wonder Dog. <laughs> Wonder Dog returns. You gave him to us again. Screed. Any other highlights? Uh, a trip to the garden centre. <laughs> Just uh. <laughs> Pick up a couple of bits and bobs. Did they pick up anyone called Bobler? Dying of Fire. Any of the highlights, Creed? That's it. Cool. Mr. Ollivander, any highlights for that session? I prefer you to refer to me as my full name. Mr. Thruston. Oh, I was going to say Ollie Wally Ding Dong. You know, fine, fuck it, I see how it is now. Yeah. Um... Any highlights? So Mr. Ding Dong was my father's name. Call me Ollie <laughs> Wally. <laughs> um, uh, a single unit of bant. <laughs> Damn it. Um, two party members proceeding down the werewolf side of the mountain. The werewolf face, I suppose. I uh, wasn't how much shorter than that. I can't. Uh, anything else? Um, Holborn leaving us to die. <laughs> no, Poperjack, sorry. Poperjack leaving us to die. 
I mean, they to die. Yeah. Just too slow. And you, you instinct, you started that. <laughs> you ran off first. That's called being smart. I mean, you did propose it. Uh, to be fair, I think you had all bought in on the like. Well, this will maybe throw them off, and if it doesn't, it means that it'll probably mean only one of you has to die rather than. The tree bar, I emphatically did not propose pissing into the wind or out of it yeah. to distract them from the scent of ourselves, which would be carried on us. You know, when he said it at first, I thought it was going to be like, a, oh, it's got really sensitive smells, so what if you, like, ball up your shirt or something, piss on that, and then if it comes at you, huck the shirt at it so it gets confused. But no, it was just like, have a powerful slash right here on the ground, that'll confuse it, then we run. I thought it was further away than it actually was. <laughs> no, I just love that. Slash and the- yeah, powerful slash should be one of the highlights. <laughs> powerful slash in front of Oh no, that's going to look so innocuous. Uh, any other can, can we have slash in in uh, inverted brackets, please? No. Wait, if, in quotation, well, inverted in brackets? Marks. What the in fuck inverted is brackets. an inverted in brackets? In quotation marks. <laughs> Inverted brackets, whether just this way. I'm putting, I'm putting a highlight right here now. Inverted brackets. <laughs> any other, any other highlights, Ollie? Sorry, um, Mr. Ding Dong. <laughs> that's my father's name. I think you'll find I'm oh, Mr. Olwell. Um, yeah, uh, that's it for me. <sighs> cool. In that case, saving the best for last. Carl, any highlights for that session? Reginald Loxley Drive. God damn it. Old Loxley Drive. Yeah, sometimes I put a lot of effort into like uh, a convincing or funny alternate Schlort name. And sometimes you get a Beginald Loxley Drive. What's my Schlort name in this campaign? Um, so I know Schlort once. Alan. Re- uh, Callum. Alan. Ah, uh, Alan. It's Alan. My name, like Cher. Alan. Alan. <laughs> yeah, he really hates dinosaurs. I don't know why. Um,. Any any other any other highlights, Carl? Uh, doorway dilemma. <laughs> Fair. Oh, uh, any other highlights? Considering baiting cats with Sando. Sando. Sandwich. Oh right, yes. Fair. I'm following you. Sorry. Jeez, oh, come on. I've got a reminder as well, actually, after highlights. Uh, Give us the reminder now before you forget. Uh, Make sure to have at least two sandwiches in pockets at all times. That was your takeaway from that, was it? Yep. (laughs) I need more sandwiches. Fucking hell. Um, Any other highlights, Carl? Uh, Yes, I got a few. Uh, As a quote. Team Piss Nobles. <coughs> Fuck. <laughs> Any other highlights? Uh, Cat Clop and Zanzarim cameos. I don't know what you mean. Uh, no idea. Uh, God, I remember how you spell uh, Zanzarim. Yeah, no, yeah, it was with an X, right? No, it isn't. No. Um, oh. Uh, fair. Yeah, no, I, I was... <laughs> Because obviously it's piss terrifying when Cat Clop comes at you, right? One of Cat Clop's most notable features is he almost never eats anyone. He's just constantly threatening to do it. But he he invariably backs off at the last moment or someone points out that he shouldn't do that and then he just stops. Yeah. He does end up with lots of people's heads in his mouth, though. You end right. up with a lot of heads in your mouth. And, and I don't think you even once clamp down. Oh, there was there was once, I think. No, there was one guy who you ate bits of him, but you didn't eat his head. You ate like his intestines and stuff, like you eat his feet. He stole his shoes. Yeah, he yeah, did feet. eat his feet as well. Actually, yeah, I, sorry. I mauled him to death. <coughs> no, he was murdered by other people. You just ate bits of him afterwards. Yeah, try to like clean up the uh, crime scene, if I recall. Yeah, to yeah, by like mauling him. Animal I like mauled his dead corpse. You're like you're like six hungry pigs, is what you are. Yet for a man, two hundred two hundred pound man in thirty minutes, they will. Any other any other highlights there, Carl? Uh, the reluctant willpower. Reluctant. <laughs> I was right. You'll see. Fair, fair. Any other highlights? Uh, playing D and D in Wad. Fucking twenty foot pole, you absolute cretins. <laughs> Ten foot even. 
We had a D20 and we had a 20 foot pole and 50 foot a hemp woven rope. I don't see anything wrong with this. Right. If anything, you should be letting us roll D20s rather than D10s, I think. No. No, I won't be. <laughs> any, any of the highlights there, Carl? Uh, uh, again, a quote. I mean, like it's kind of long, so feel free to consider it under one of the others, because I think it got pretty close. Um, the next time I get a chance to poison a dog while it sleeps, I'll take it. I think that about works. Dog hasn't even done anything. <laughs> just, just bean. Yeah, it's about to fucking eat us. Any other highlights? The last one is also a quote. Uh, the working class are useless. <laughs> Mr. Lynx is very, very unimpressed with you. Fair, fair. Oh. Uh, any other... <laughs> We've got two separate quotes here. I knew I couldn't trust the lower classes and the working class are useless. Any any other highlights? Uh, it's all for me, thanks. Fair. I think I think that's covered everything from me. Um, oh, I've got one. Oh, yeah. um, can you really call this tea? <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had tea like that before, and it's just murky water at that point. You're like, why? Why am I doing this? So clearly the next Elder Scrolls game is set on the North Yorkshire Moors. Uh, it'll be Something. A, an all-sench party with one mm. cat. Uh, it would be an all-zinch party instead. <laughs> oh. Yes, the next Black Crusade campaign is also set on the Yorkshire Moors at the same <laughs> time. I mean... Aren't we under the Empress Palace right now or something like that, if I remember rightly? Empress Palace is like across Europe or something, right? Oh, no, the Empress Palace is across uh, Asia. It's centred on the Himalayas. Oh, I thought that's where the, the labs were. I thought the labs were like the Himalayas. No, the well, yeah, the, the labs are at the heart and underneath the palace. Yeah, okay. What's what's in the Yorkshire Dales then? In um, the I don't really recall. It's just one part of the Mega Hive, I think. Uh, Damn you, Benji. That's you were here, you for the record, when they say, uh, what's it called? When they're talking about how, like, the impressive walls of the Imperial Palace, a good portion of those walls are the Himalayas, um, which makes it all the more awesome when you picture, like, fucking Titan legions having to storm the Himalayas themselves, <laughs> topped with giant fuck off castles. It's, uh, it's a vision. It wouldn't stop, it wouldn't stop Creed and, a, and, 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 a, and you know, the smallest sized. Where there's a will, there's a way. It's definitely oh, worth a... pointing out that the breach was not initially taken by Titans. It was taken by fucking infantry because the world eaters give no shits. What's that? A Legion of Jeffersons? <laughs> no. Bad the world eaters. They're the Jeffersons. Cool. Well, thank you all for a very entertaining session number 35. Do I have any final words for the recording? Uh, the lower class is rock.